Hello and welcome along to the Moda Super Series where this afternoon Group C gets underway. We have a 10-time world champion and a former champion of champions here at the Moda Super Series in action. But before we preview that, let's remind you of what happened yesterday as Neil Duff became the first player through to Saturday's finals night. Marvin Van Velzen will be pleased to have the slate wiped clean today. This 1-1-4 against White, not really a reflection of his finishing over the course of the day. Things are looking up for Bradley Roos, though. He won three of his five yesterday, reeled in the big fish against Duff on Tuesday and an impressive 150 against him yesterday. Adam Hunt reached the semi-finals the last time we saw him here. He's not been able to produce his best so far this week. He'll need to improve his overall level today. Things are looking more than all right for Stuart White. A solid Group A and some special moments like this mean he returns tonight. Well, as for Niall Cullerton, he led the way for a while, finished second despite knowing that he still has plenty more in the locker. The right man won the group. Neil Duff was consistently the best player. He'll be a real danger come Saturday night. Yeah, delighted to be joined by Chris Mason. Just a quick word on Neil Duff. We can have a look at the table and see just how things finished up. Really impressive over the course of the three days, wasn't he? Yeah, fairly dominant in the end, wasn't he? He lost his final match of the day to a very good Bradley Rose, so that will give him a bit of confidence coming into today. But yeah, Neil Duff... By far the best player in that group of six. Yeah, and Bradley Roos finished there on 12 points. He has been up on that stage all morning practising. Do you think there is a case that he could have practised too much this morning because he was up there for well over an hour this morning? Possibly, but lucky for him, he's only 18 years of age, so he can probably spend all day on there and it not, not bother him one little bit. But uh, I was impressed the way he finished the day because there was very little to be pleased about. Uh, but to finish with a win over Neil Duff, who was crowned the uh, winner of Group A, um, it gave him confidence going in today. I expect him to have a, a much better day. Let's have a look then at the numbers from Group A. Of course, the overall average, when you look at that, was down below 80% in the end. The checkout percentage is what we focused on a lot, though, wasn't it? Because many of the players had double trouble. Yeah, and that's, that's where the damage was done. 27% is a good 6% below sort of what we would call par 33%, one out of three. Uh, hence the, the average being under 80 Yes, indeed. Right, we're going to move on to today's action then. Let's have a look at the players who are going to take to the stage in Group C. Adam Hunt, Bradley Roos and Marvin Van Velzen all return. Trina Gulliver, 10-time world champion. Of course, we mentioned it yesterday that she's reached two semi-finals on the Women's Series already this year. What do you expect from your opponent in a few weeks' time? <laughs> uh, yeah, to be honest, I was in just sort of having a nose and watching her sort of warm up and go through her practice routines. She's throwing very, very well, and she played very well in that women's series to make two semi-finals because that's, as we know, a, a tough school and vastly experienced and a, a genuine legend of the game. Yeah, let's have a look then at what the bookies think of Group C. No surprise to see the former champion of champions, Conan Whitehead, as the 11-8 to favourite. Would you agree with that? Yeah, I, can, I can't see a lot wrong with that. 11-8, to eight, he's in good form. We've been sort of watching over what he's been doing on the ADC Vault Series. He's been dominant in that, but he's also been putting in some big, big numbers. And yeah, he seems ready for it. And Jeremy Fagg is a name that many people are talking about at the moment. Excited to see him back in action. And good to see that this is his third successive go at this. He's getting used to it, isn't he? Yeah, certainly is. And he was a bit unfortunate last time here. And I think coming in on a Thursday and Friday should, should suit him. It's, it's a nice time to play in the afternoon. The, the early ones, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, are tough for the players. So, yeah, I expect him to go well. And there may be value in that 5-2. to two. If, if Conan's slightly off colour, it could be Jeremy that uh, takes advantage. And Aces Acker for our first Group C session of the week returns well over 6-1. to one. Talk us through your selections. Yeah, I've gone for Fag against Van Velsen and I've, I've played the handicap there. I, I, I think when you look at Jeremy's numbers up against uh, Van Velsen, I think he should beat him 4-0, 4-1. Um, again, Jeremy up against Trina. Most 1-8 is I've gone for Jeremy at 6-5 and then Gulliver against Whitehead. Most 1-8 is and we know Conan loves a 180 at 4-6 and those are the three sort of standout 
value bets for me. Pays nearly 7-1. to one. And Adam Hunt up first this morning against Trina Gulliver. What aspect of his game do you think he needs to improve on today? I, I, I just think he may be having a bad week. And, and the, the problem with these events is you can't, you can't time your form. If, you're, if you come into it and you're out of form, you're out of form. There's very little you can do about it. You can try and play through it uh, or just wait for that good form to arrive. We've seen, we've seen spells from him. We've seen lots of 180s as usual. He just needs to he either finish his first start and doesn't score very well or, or scores well and then struggles to, to end the leg. So he's just got to combine the two. Right, let's get into it then and hand over to Henry Deacon to get things underway. Thank you very much, Abby. Very good afternoon, everyone. And welcome along to a double dosage of darting drama here at the Moda Super Series. We kick off with a true legend of the sport, the 10-time world champion, Trina Gulliver, back in action here at the Live Lounge in Portsmouth. It is a third appearance here at the Super Series for the 10-time world champion, the Golden Girl herself. Up against Adam Hunt, who himself made his first appearance in this competition in 2023, the 29-year-old from Chesterley Street. On Tuesday, we saw glimpses of some of his best form, but he'll be the first to admit that Wednesday was far from fruitful for the Hunter. So, who is going to claim the spoils in this first match of the day? We're about to find out. It's an intriguing group, headlined by the 10-time world champion and the former champion here in Conan Whitehead. Justin Bradshaw on. is your referee for the 15 games that are about to commence this afternoon and sat alongside me here in the commentary box to talk all about it. It is Trina Gulliver's opponent 16. at the World Seniors Masters, Chris Mason. Good afternoon, H. Yeah, I at least uh, get a chance to see what I'm up against. I said 140. In He's looking very comfortable. She does have a bit of experience here as well, of course. 100. The word legends get banded around quite freely, but Trina Gulliver most definitely is a, a legend of the sport. 134. Not so much by the connoisseurs, but maybe to the armchair spectator, is what Trina's done in the game sometimes a little bit overlooked because of the rise of the game in recent 85. years? 85. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it was... She was a, very much a, a trailblazer. But now, of course, with the media tension around what things like Fallon and Lisa and, and Bo are doing, you're right. She sometimes can be a little forgotten. She shouldn't be. 100. And Adam when she was at her absolute best, her, her numbers do, do match up nicely with a lot of the darts we're seeing today. 55. Trina, you require well, She paved the way for the rest to follow. Is she going to pave the way to opening success here by notching a 156? Not on this occasion. So Adam's going to return for 32 60. to take the opening leg. Adam, you require 32. Been a tidy start, too, from. Adam Hunt, double eight for a 14. 16. Well, that's been Trina, you require a 96. bit of a Achilles heel for him so far this week. 62. Couldn't recover the second dart, so Adam is going to return for that double eight. 42. Adam, you require 16. Do have a good start to this group, Adam Hunt, because of the way things Game shot on the first ended day. for him Adam yesterday. Hunt. We actually expect him to make a bit of a kick on the final day because of his performances on Tuesday, but that never materialised. And Second leg it has Adam to be to said, he really, Game really on. struggled towards the end of that group. There was no real rhyme or reason towards it. Sometimes just one of those days at the hockey. Yeah, I just think it, it knocked the stuffing out of him, the, the way he played over the course of the, the three days. Uh, I I had a good chat with him dinner time today and like I said with, with Abby he just couldn't put his finger on why it's but that's just sport and of course the the more you continue to struggle the the more you will struggle because you then start to force the issue <clears throat> so they say the harder you try the worse it gets absolutely 97 I say you're looking very dapper today, Mace. Well, it's only a t-shirt and a blazer, pal, but, you know, if you can pull it off. <laughs> 140. He's doing the business here, isn't he, again? Two dart checkout after nine this time. 40. Adam, you require 98. Potential. 
I'll have a dart it. Fifty-eight. Thirty-two after twelve in leg one. Tops after twelve in leg two. We're on the verge of opening 95. up a two-nil lead in and next to forty. No time at all. Averaging 103 at the minute, Getting Adam Hunt. The second leg. 14 Adam Hunt. darter, 2 0 lead. All done in the space of 30 darts. Third leg Trina's is Trina to throw first. Walked Getting into on. one here. One hundred. Certainly the throw hasn't changed over the years. It's no change there at all. One hundred. Take a look at the throw side on. Nice solid base. Seventy-eight. Who was your pick for this group? One hundred. Did you go? Did you side with the bookies and go Whitehead? I just think form, experience, and knowing this format inside out, I think it's it's really hard to back against Conan. One hundred and twenty. And present moment in time. Now he can sometimes in these two day groups in Group C sometimes have a slow start on the Thursday, but then on the Friday he will 96. make up the ground. But you just get the the sense of way he's playing at the minute, and you you put everyone head to head that he's the standout player in this group. 98. Seems nice and relaxed in the practice room and seems in a, in a real good place. 95. Trini require 100. It's a bit of better leg from Gulliver, leaving a ton after 12. Triple 19. We've left the subsequent double. And so Adam returns for 110 with a double break. Yeah, just confirming with the referee. 25. Adam, you require 110. For three zip. Tops to get it done. Oof. 90. Trina, you require 75. Oh, to cut the deficit in half. 58. 18 for tops. Oh, misses the big number. 35. Second guessing herself a little bit Adam here. require 20. 15. Leave the double five, and so Gulliver returns Trini to tops. require 40. To bring it back to 2-1. 2-1 it is, and Trina when given opportunities, you'll by and large take them. Now, the kind of story with Trina Gulliver at the Super Series, and I've commentated on all of her, her games here at the Live first. Lounges. Her sessions tend to start with the first couple of games just working her way through, and then the middle two games is when she plays her best stuff. But at the minute, she's being forced to play her best from the get-go because Adam here is just going up and above through the levels. 140. Good reply. 100. One hundred and forty. Back to back, one forties. I'm liking what I'm seeing. Looking forward to playing against it. <laughs> 82. Chris Mason, who may well be the first player in the tournament and possibly the first player out of it again. <laughs> yeah. 45. Adam, you require 130. That's where you like the commentary box. You're guaranteed to make the final there. Always in the final. May stay there. 77. Not for the first time. Looking at a five-visit leg. 
85. There's a little bit of pressure Adam, on the 62. 62. On a double 16. Doesn't 30. go, and so Gulliver's got an opportunity. Trini require 91. To level this game back up at two apiece. Thinking of options, may go bullseye first. Does go bullseye first, and smack in the middle of the bullseye as well. So is it going to be single one or single nine? Single one is what she wants for a dart at top, so two apiece. 51. Adam, you require Is that a big moment in the game? It's a big swing leg. Game shot in the fourth leg. Adam Hunt. Adam Hunt gets it done with a 17 dart hold, not before Trina. Had a dart at tops to level things up. Fifth leg, it's Trina to throw first. Game on. Establishes that two leg cushion. And the thing is, for Adam's scoring power, he is giving Trina opportunities, and it's mainly because of this. Ten missed darts at double 59. over the course of the match. He's still averaging over 92. That shows you how. Well, he scored. And that 92 has actually come down from a very high base over the, last, over the first couple of legs, at least, anyway. One hundred. And remember, coming up after this, Conan Whitehead will take on Bradley Rose. And Jeremy Fagg's going to be back for a second appearance as Adam Hunt finds his third maximum of the match. Jeremy Fagg taking on Marvin Van Vels and Jeremy back for a second stint after appearing 76. last week. Narrowly missing out on finals nights on two occasions. Did an interview with Conan this morning, didn't you? <clears throat> Is that coming 100. up prior to the match? We'll be getting some bits of Conan. We're going to be showing the winning moment from his Series 1 exploits. We'll be chopping up that interview and getting it out to ASAP. 140. Adam Hunt will get this game Adam done ASAP. 1-2-4 to get it done 4-1. Triple 18. A dart of the bull to win it. 99. He wasn't far away. Trini Way of dart was superb. Slightly west of the target. It can't finish, so Adam will be back at 25. Essentially 46. a 4 1 defeat. Adam, you 25. He should be relatively pleased with her start to the day. Like you said, tends to be a bit of a slow starter. Nine. Trina, you require 80. Three from 16 now on the doubles. Giving Gulliver another opportunity. One dart at tops to bring it back to 3 2. 60. Well, far away, but this is now Adam, you require another 16. free in hand for Adam Hunt to get the job done 4 1. Game. Shot. And in it goes, and, match, and Adam Hunt Adam gets Hunt. the better of Trina Gulliver by four legs to one to kick off his campaign for Group C here at the Super Series. An impressive start, 91 and a half average. And that was despite 14 missed darts at double in that match. The scoring was absolutely immaculate. Three 180s in the process. There's a lot to build upon there for Adam Hunt, who looks as if he's dispelled the rose of yesterday and kicking off today to some tune. Coming up next is the former champ Conan Whitehead up against Bradley Rose.
So then, a winning start to proceedings this morning for Adam Hunt. Next up, we have Conan Whitehead, a man who has previously scooped the £20,000 first prize on that very stage behind me. A winner on the Challenge Tour recently as well, and he did get a victory over Mensa Suljevic on the Players' Championship circuit at the weekend. Before we find out how he fares this week at the Super Series, let's remind you all of his winning moment here a few months ago. Is 44. Conan, you're required. Good enough. 44. For cool. I bet his heart is pumping at a million miles an hour at this point. Double 16. Game Whitehead shot. wins the and title. The and wins and the, the title. Under the confetti here. Conan. At the Lord of Slide Whitehead. Lounge. Whitehead is the man. He is the last man standing, and he is the person that cannot be moved from the pinnacle here of stage one. 4 0 in the final. He just had too much in the arsenal for the gambler. What a stage! What a Champions Week! What a finals night! And that may be the catalyst for the career of Conan the Barbarian. A nice little trip down memory lane there as Conan White picked up the first ever. Super Series crown getting the better Graham Asher now a PDC tour card holder in that final. If you actually look at the finals night in Series 1, there is three players now that have gone on to pick up PDC tour cards that played in that particular finals night. Of course, Graham Usher, Josh Payne also picking up a tour card. And also Lee Evans played in that first ever Champions Week finals night. There's also a fella sat next to me who played in that first Champions finals night. Yeah, great memories. Great to just have a look down memory lane. Great moment for Conan Whitehead as well. And he went so, so close to getting a first tour card, of Conan course. In fact, if first, he wouldn't have on. played on the final day of Q School, he actually would have ended up with a card. One hundred and forty. to start, that is. <laughs> Justifying why everybody's tipping him to be the group favourite and quite possibly the favourite to win the week. He's one of... Three players now on 4-1 to one with the odds compilers to go on and win the week. Matt Dennett and Neil Duff, the other two. 100. He's, a, he's a, one of the unusual players that hardly practices in, in preparation. You know, have the odd throw year in there, but as a rule, tends to just 59. chill out and survey the practice room. Using a 140 new, newly designed dart nowadays as well. He had a fair bit of input on. I think he likes them. He started okay, hasn't he? 138. Conan, you require 120. For 12. Level 17. Want to get him a dart at the bullseye? Bradley Rose may have to take out this 164. 97. He's kind of really sat in the background Bradley of his opening leg due to the brilliance of the Barbarian. Traditional route, but the treble not found. 100. 12 darts thrown. Double 24. 12 needed. Should be a good guide. No score. He can quite Bradley requires 64. Not the target. But credit to Bradley Rose here, who is stuck with the task of the opening leg. And despite the scoring brilliance of Whitehead, he's going to get a dart, a double 48. 16, but it doesn't go. And so Whitehead returns with 12s, and you don't expect him to pass up an opportunity for a second time. But he may do if he can't find this double Game three, the first but leg. pins it Conan last dart in hand to take the lead by a leg to nil. He missed five darts at double in that opening leg, but as far as the scoring phase Second is concerned, well, no first. issues Game at all on. for the Barbarian. Yep, bright start. Very comfortable older throw, despite Bradley getting one dart at a double. 140. New shirt for Conan. This week 100. on the back of the collar, it's got his daughter's name, Ada, on it. He's down here with 
My Chevrolet this week. Yeah, I actually seen it this morning. 100. Oh, lunchtime. And he said when he won this title, and he said it again in the interview, we're going to broadcast as well shortly that family's been his biggest inspiration when it's come to the sport. There was a point where he thought maybe his journey in darts was finished, but we're glad that he decided to stick with the course because... Yeah, I, think, I think missing out on that tour card so cruelly sort of sort of set him back a little bit and I think he I think he questioned his 60. maybe his desire to put himself through it but decided to continue I think one of the main reasons he wants to he wants his daughter to actually see him play 100. on the big stage and his ambition is to win this title again we have three different winners of three series. No one has, able to, has been able to pick up the cup twice. That would be some achievement. So would this. Tops. 76. Conan, you require 61. 25 for 36. For a 2-0 lead. 43. The reaction said it all. Bradley require 40. Yeah, one from eight on the outer ring at the moment. Game shot in the second leg. Bradley Ruse. Good response from Bradley. 16 dart hold. One missed dart. Third Sorry, leg is two missed to dart. First. Double 18. On. Two nil. One hundred and forty. Just wondering, the more we're learning about Bradley, maybe it's one of those players that has that goes with a certain pace and way in a game. Because we saw some 58. games where it became a little bit of a struggle for him at times, but that was because his opponents were also struggling. It wasn't as if he was struggling and the opposition was blasting in a 90 or so average. In this game, Conan White is averaging 94.15. Bradley himself, 92.12. Maybe he's one of those go-with-the-flow type players. 140. It could well be. He's certainly playing to a level right now in this one that we've not seen too 91. much of so far this week. Early stages of the match, but as an indication to how well he's made that start to the game, he's averaging over 96. 133. Conan, you require 170. Both leaving the fish after nine. Whitehead isn't going to get a go on this occasion. So, Bradley. 96. Who's already Bradley had one this week. 170. Watched it on day two in his game against Neil Duff. Isn't going to repeat the feat in his opening game of Thursday. 45. Conan, you require 74. Yeah, had two victories. Over the course of Group A against the Group A winner, Neil Duff. Game shot in the third leg. Conan Whitehead. As for this one, it's Conan who's opened up a 2-1 lead. Yep, nice clean. Fourth leg is Bradley the leg. to throw 15 first. 15 darter, 74 out. This is what they call a tidy game of darts. One hundred and forty. Forty-three. I'm going to watch how the darts enter the board now from a overhead camera angle. You see, it has a slight kick up to the right, Bradley Rose's darts, as we've analysed all week. One hundred and forty. Uh, this is the first time we've seen Conan's darts from this particular angle. 140. Forget this evening. We will 100. start our Group B action. Should be just around when the Premier League 
Finals night come to a conclusion. We're on air at 10 o'clock on Sporty Stuff TV and, of course, Badly Require 121. on Armoda Super Series YouTube channel and our chosen bookmaker provider. Eighty-nine. Nice setup from Bradley. Thirty-two after twelve. He's averaging just shy of a hundred now. Ninety-two. Which is by far and away. Bradley required thirty-two. His best darts of the week. This is for two-two. Double sixteen. Game shot in the Bound fourth. Bound four-two apiece. That's a thirteen darter for Bradley Rose, and this is the highest quality game. That we've seen all week up to press. 99.8 and 95 on. the averages respectively. Bradley Rose, two out of four when it's come to the doubles. The big difference as far as Whitehead is concerned 100. is when it comes to the double stats. Seven missed at the outer ring. Sixty. Connor, who's been so prolific on the 100. ADC Vault Series back home in Gillingham this week, played in that tournament, averaged 95.9 in the final, and had a first nine average of 110.83. 58. Overall tournament average of 85.51, which actually, if you compare it to his stats over the course of the year, pretty much 16. isn't too far off. It's, it's only a couple of points off, 85.38. Got just two legs en route. One hundred. Just shows you the difference with that fresh start mentality. One hundred. Match one from Adam Hunt, who be the first to admit struggled to find any kind of consistent forming group a and very much like bradley 99 and marvin sort of got bogged down at the wrong end of the table you know, i genuinely think these positions you can swing in your favor whichever way if you're new to it then you've got no baggage no scars from the previous three days although if you're a player coming into this group well, you're going to say to them well they're not as match sharp as you. So you can you can swing it one way or the other. It depends a lot on Coming whether the glass is half full or the glass is half empty. Absolutely. Right, tops. We're going Game front shot again. The fifth leg. Conan and Whitehead. Our fifth consecutive hold of throw. Been a very, very Sixth good leg game this. Bradley to throw first. Game on. Both players of equal pace. Both players very measured in terms of their approach. 60. Two players that won't rush. What I mean with that is they throw at a good pace, but they'll make sure that every single dart 100. is thrown properly. There will be no third dart that just gets yanked into the board, for example. No, there's no real walking on the final dart. Fifty-seven. Fifty-nine. Forty-five. Able to plunk one in the middle there, so it opens up the door now for... Conan Whitehead to find the one, and he'll hope, well, be the only breaker throw if he can accrue one in this one, but the door was left open, and he's just handed the initiative back to Bradley. 140. That's a sick 140 for him. In terms of this match, there's been 13 so far. Yet to see a max in this one. 140. The 140s, as you say. 14 now. That's some tally. 
Well, 133. Conan, you require 147. 60, 51, 36. All right, he's going to have to just try and set this up. 59. And hope Bradley makes a mess Bradley of the 66. Bradley requires 66. Bradley be hoping that he gets his kicks on route 66. Otherwise, Conan will be left on two fat ladies and the fat 46. lady may be singing. Conan, you require 88. 18 ball. Trouble leaves double seven. 74. Oh, Bradley was nodding. Bradley required Behind 20. thinking it was all over. Deserves a final leg Game this one, and we are going to get Bradley one. Rares. Longest leg of the match. We do go to a seventh and deciding leg. Seventh and final leg is Conan to Little throw to first. choose between Come them. On. Bradley has two more scores uh, between a ton and one three nine. Than Conan, but Conan has two more one forties, so that negates that. It ultimately come down to the doubles where Bradley Rose is free from eight. Conan White by contrast free from eleven. Well, may well just come down to the advantage of throw, but two visits troublous for Conan has opened the door for Bradley. Fifty eight. One hundred. But Conan is so experienced in this position. You know exactly what he needs to do to carve out the opening, the opportunity. Sixty. As for Bradley, because of what happened over the first three days, you just hope he doesn't try too hard, knowing that the finishing line is in front of him. Well, there's the one eighty we've been waiting for. What a time to get it. Didn't say sport is sometimes all about timing. Oh, it could be like buses. One hundred and eighty. Conan, you require one hundred and twenty. Two at once. Climbing the ladder towards victory is Conan Whitehead. Tops to get the job done and to win an absolute Brahma 18. of a match. Doesn't go, and so Bradley Rhodes on the back Bradley of the match is looking to convert one hundred and forty-four for the game's only break, and to seal. Victory in his first game of the group. Double 12 to do it with some fanfare. And it was almost there. Conan, you require But the 40. former champ has tops to clinch the points. Game. And shot. tops is and bound for Whitehead. Whitehead. It's a win for Whitehead to kick off his campaign as he gets the better of Bradley Rose by four legs to three in a fantastic scrap, a fantastic battle. Both players averaging 91. Conan Whitehead getting over the line. Four out of 13 on the doubles. Bradley Rhodes, three from nine. That was a really, really enjoyable watch. Next up, Jeremy Fagg against Marvin Van Velzen.
Jeremy Fagg and Marvin Van Velzen complete our first round of matches this afternoon. He had a very impressive Group A campaign the last week he was here, Fagg, before struggling in Group B. He's taken on a Dutchman looking to put his Group A campaign behind him today to see whether he's able to do just that. Let's rejoin Chris Mason and Henry Deacon. Well, thank you very much, Abby. So, what are we going to see here as Marvin Van Velzen takes on Jeremy Fagg, our third game of the afternoon session? And it's nearly the end of a three-week-long three stint for Jeremy Fagg. Sounds like I've had a three-week-long stint here in the country. On the beer. <laughs> <laughs> Jeremy Fagg up against Marvin Van Velzen is our third game of the afternoon session. Jeremy's been here pretty much from the start of this Series travelled over from Australia with Mal Cumming, gave him some support on week one before playing the full week last week. And because he's come all the way over from Oceania, we've allowed him to have that second bite of the cherry here in week three as well. A good representative of the ADC in the Oceanic region over the last few weeks. And first lady, chatting to him this morning, to first. he knows it's Game the end on. of a long road for him and he'd love to finish off his campaign by making it to a Saturday night final. And if he does, then he's willing to take anything and everything from there. 60. Yeah, didn't know too much about Jeremy until he played last week. Certainly got game. 95. Change of equipment as well, isn't there? Yeah, so since the last time we've seen Jeremy in action, he's 58. changed over to the Michael Smith darts, the one that he used so successfully. Alexander Palace, so he's, he's swapped to them, hoping that a bit of a change of equipment will see a change of his fortunes. Now, he now only missed out in qualification from Group A last week. He lost out on legs one to Mike Warburton. And then in Group B, he was in the race at the end of Thursday, but a poor Friday ended his, his chances of getting through to Saturday night's final. Yeah, well, maybe a little fatigued by the final day of the week. And here's a... Well, I doubt if he would have played that, mu that much in a, a five-day period before. Marvin, you require I 170. I don't think you should underestimate the fact he's come all the way from Australia as well. He's been away from his 70. family and friends and things like that for such a long time. And getting back home... On Sunday, following the play over the next couple of days, and by the sounds of it, he's going to be Marvin a busy man 100. as soon as he gets back to Australia. Housing renovations and things like that on the go for him when he returns. Well, at least he's experienced Jeremy some of the Quiet, British 88. summer, or pretty much all of it. Double 14. A bit of a steal. Been chasing right in the leg. Marvin, you require 40. And his chances, it's come and gone. And so Van Velzen tops. Game shot in the first leg. take the leg. opening Marvin leg in the Van space Velsen. of 16 darts. It's a breaker throw for the Dutchman to get his campaign off to a promising start. Second Marvin, leg of course, Marvin the first. Game on. final player of the three that competed in Group A. Himself, 54. Bradley and Adam. So far, those two before him that played in Group A have played very well. Adam averaging over 91. 60. And Bradley did the same. I think we did ask that question of the pair, didn't we, as to 99. how they're going to move into this group. It's that restart mentality, isn't it? And we've seen a lot of players 81. that they can let those first three days really get to them and it affects everything that happens on Thursday and Friday. But I think players are learning 34. very quickly that they just need to put it to the back of their mind. Maybe spend the Wednesday afternoon doing something completely away from darts, completely forgetting about the competition and resetting your mind ready for a fresh stint 47. on Thursday and Friday. Alternatively, you can do what Luke Littler does and go to the Phoenix Club and win. 180. 
I have to wait to the last leg for our first 180 of this match. 100. Marvin, you require 134. The action of uh, Jeremy. 94. Don't forget, if you want to get in touch with us here, direct into the commentary box 40. at MSS Darts, all one word on Twitter. We're also on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. 30. Got any comments or questions? Jeremy, you require 76. Henry will have the app open on his laptop. Thirty-six. Another opportunity. Marvin, you require ten. Come and gone for Jeremy. Marvin's had to have a couple of opportunities to get legs one. And he no may score. need another. He may not get another as Jeremy looks for tops Jeremy to level up 40. and to accrue the break back. Game shot break in the back second found. Leg. Jeremy one, one. Fag. Tomorrow, of course, sees third leg is Jeremy to throw first. The Euro Game Tour on. get underway. The European Darts Grand Prix from Sindelfingen. I'll keep you up to speed with the results there as they happen. No need to go anywhere else. 81. Plenty of friends of the Super Series in action. Gian Van Veen against 42. Jermaine Watamina. Richie Eddowes in action. Graham Usher against Ratajski. Thirty. Adam Smith Neon also in action. Dylan Slevin. Graham Hall. One hundred and nineteen up against Whitlock. And Clemens against Lee Evans. Plenty of ex Super Series stars. One hundred and forty. Ex for good reason because they've now gone on and done some brilliant things in the professional ranks. Sounds like you're auditioning for Jeff Stelling's job there, Mace. Oh, dear, oh, dear, no. They're, they're shoes that cannot be filled. 81. Who would want that job? 40. Well, it's like Jeremy, who's getting a step closer to getting the job done in this particular leg. 123. He's himself on 46. Van Velsen back on 219. 135. Jeremy, a little bit of pressure, 46. or extra pressure on the 46. Tops is his go-to double. Six. Marvin, you require He's had six. Uh, a double and only hit one so far. This man's had seven and only hit one. That's a disaster. Forty-four. To not even get a dart at the ball there. Jeremy, you require forty. It has been very shaky towards the finishing line in legs. Players have needed a multitude of opportunities to get legs one. This is double ten. Game shot in the third leg. 20 Jeremy points Fag. found with the 20 of darts in the leg. And Jeremy Fagley's Marvin Van Velzen by two legs to one. Fourth leg is Marvin to throw first. Game on. Standard of play so far well below 100. What we've seen thus far in this Group C. Remember, top two from this Group C over the course of today and tomorrow. 10 matches for 140. the to play, 20 points available. Top two will join Neil Duff and the top three from Group B, which gets underway 97 at 10 o'clock. Neil Duff, who I've already seen this morning, surveying the local area. I have a little walk around the town this morning.
lovely day for it here on the 42. south coast. Yeah, maybe a maybe a cool one down at Spoons outside. Surely it's a seafront kind 58. of day, isn't it? That can get a little messy, though. You wouldn't know about that. <laughs> Speak from experience. 39. See, I would try and speak from experience, but I probably wouldn't remember. You do the remembering 82. for me. One hundred. Marvin, you require 164. Got six from here. Van Velzen for two apiece. 96. A fair enough job in setting up. Love a 140 here. 100. Gave it a good Marvin, effort. Marvin, you require 68. Or 20. Tops. 48. Jeremy require Double 80. trouble for both. I didn't even contemplate the 16 there. Straight for the tops was Van Velzen. And that's the target that Jeremy wants. But how much of that can he see? How much of that can he find? To try and avoid, yeah. And that was 40. the danger. Marvin, you require 20. So you need a Daryl Gurney flatty. Two fives. Fifteen. And the trend of Miss Doubles continues Jeremy, to plague the players 40. in this game. Game shot on the fourth leg. 3-1 Jeremy, Jeremy Fag. Fag. Break it throw. And now he's within one of the victory posts in his opening game of the group and his opening game of this week at the Live Lounge. Fifth leg is well, Jeremy. A, a bright to start first. from Game Marvin, on. a 16 dart break of throw in leg one. It a 180, but a missed opportunity in leg two, and it's all been bad news. 100. Since since then, as Jeremy's reeled off three on the spin. 60. Ten missed darts at double as well for the Dutchman. Nothing's come easy, really, for the pair in this game. Oh, it's been a bit of a grind. 60. One hundred and four. Adam Hunt in action. He takes on Conan Whitehead. And on the basis of both of those players' opening performances, a win to the board, 91 averages a piece. That could be an absolute 100. cracker. Thirty. Thirty in front, plus these. One good visit 83. away, really, isn't he? Just from wrapping this one up. Oh, Ninety-five. At least a Twenty-five there to leave a finish. Not to be, but just about sitting up upon his return with Van Velzen as twenty nine one seven six, but that's done hardly anything to create any inroads at all. And now one hundred and thirty six. Jeremy requires Van Velzen is sat on top, says one two nine. May have to go. Players nowadays go double double, don't they? In that situation, 111, 121. Marvin, you require 40. Tops for free two. Game Tops found for free two. And that's Marvin Van Velzen. Two legs, one for Marvin Van Velzen. Both have been 16s, but the legs in the middle and the legs in between have been 
Mm. Six leg is Marvin to throw squiffy. first. Game on. And they're both breaks of throw. Problem he has is getting the hold. 97. One hundred. Eighty-two. One hundred. For the last start, a couple of tons to start for Jeremy Fag. And you feel like the way this game's going, it's just been been enough. We can it's been presented 82. actually in the score and power pack in this game. He's completely outscored Marvin. Another example of that here. One hundred and eighty. He's going to get six and one, two, Jeremy one. And was that trail of the hand in the air? Almost a sign of concession for Marvin Van Velzen. And because he had six in hand, Jeremy Fagg, he looked down at the bullseye to start. 27. Yeah, again, like in the last leg, making a mess of things in the uh, approach play. It was the right shot. Going for the ball first. 97. Jeremy require 94. The execution, a little off. Single 19, leaves the ball for the match. 69. Not far away. Marvin, you require 98. But are we going all the way? Van Velsen wanting 98. This will be for the second game in three to go free free. 79. Not to be. And so Jeremy returns to 25 to Jeremy requires get his campaign of two. The perfect start. Two in his hand at double eight. Fours. Game. But leg four Shot. for Jeremy Fagg, Jeremy Fagg, who gets his campaign off to a perfect start, getting the better Marvin Van Velzen by four legs to two. It was cagey at times, but Jeremy gets over the line with a 79 average, four out of 13 on the double. So that's round one complete. After the break is Adam Hunt and Conan Whitehead.
Conan Whitehead and Adam Hunter back in action next. And if their opening performances are anything to go by, they should be a cracker. They have met twice before. Conan the winner when they played a UK Open qualifier. Hunt victorious when they met on the Challenge Tour back in March. To see who comes out on top in this one, let's rejoin our commentary team. Thanks, Abby. Yeah, this was a, a tie that we were looking forward to, that's for sure. When we seen the sequence of matches come up. I say congratulations as well to a player that we really enjoyed having here in a, a previous series. Stephen Johnston, he's won a a vault, an ADC vault, the Players Lounge. In the final, Henry. First leg is Adam Derek to throw Shields first. Game on. The 97.07 average. Very tidy, Stephen. Talk about tidy. 140. Yeah, this will be a a high-scoring affair. You can correlate a lot from both players' opening performances, and they match up quite equally. Both players 16. averaging 91 and a half, but both players also missing a number of doubles in their opening wins. For Adam Hunt, 14 missed darts at double in his 4-1 success 100. against Trina Gulliver. Meanwhile, for Conan Whitehead, nine missed opportunities at the outer ring en route to beating Bradley Rose in the last leg decider. 100. One hundred and twenty three. One hundred and eight. the sort of darts we expected. One hundred and thirty eight. Apparently. Not disappointed so far. How's the doubling? Oh, Game shot oh what a beauty. Leg. What a Hunt. wonderful leg to start the match. We suggested this will be a high scoring affair. In the opening leg, Second we have leg is Conan to throw five first. scores Game between on. them in excess of a ton. Beautiful way to finish. 60. 12 dart hold in leg one. Bit of a blue touch paper lightener. 81. 81. We have seen it so often from players 137. that really struggled in Group A and then come Thursday and Friday, they just seem to find the level that we anticipate and expect. 140. Kieran Tien, the most notable yeah. example of which. She really struggled in Group A. Picked up just three wins and three days action and then went on to win on Saturday night. The first ever Saturday night here at the Live Lounge. And you can be with us every single Saturday night at the Super Seas. We're going to flash up the QR 81. code in the next leg as to how you can join us each and every single Saturday evening at the Super Series. Meanwhile here, Conan White did six darts on 164 to get himself back level and respond to the... 12 darts to have Adam in the 44. first leg of the match. Yeah, get your phones ready. Scan the QR code. And book your ticket. Two quid. And that's just 45. a booking fee. The ticket's are absolutely require 120. free. Tops, tops, tops. Oh, Conan. 40. You are a tease, aren't you? Adam, you require 154. Certainly brave with the final dart staying there. Because he still left himself a bit to do. 44. Lucky for him. Check 46, Adams Conan, you come require up 80. There's an irony that on 120 he went tops, 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 and then on the 80 he goes for the treble. Nonetheless, it leaves that target, Game finds that target leg. to level up at one apiece. Third leg is Adam to throw first. Game on. I wonder what Adam thought about that. One hundred and twenty-five. Not much by the looks of it. Well, Kona is one of those expressive players, isn't he? And he likes to play the game 81. in a attacking style. He likes to go for his shots. Yeah, very much a showman.
95. Sometimes happens against him as well, those showbiz moments. What about a 132 or something? 140. Yeah, the, the irony of that was we were talking about some of the the best 132s we'd, we'd ever seen. And the one we both agreed on was the 46. Bill Taylor one against James Wade in the match play where well, he went so far right, he was nearly off the stage. 100. Sixty-five. Forty-six. Adam, you require 170. Well, he's had a one for eight. Is he going to add a fish to the collection? Not on this occasion. And so Whitehead will return for one three four to get a break into 134. Conan, you require 134. 54. Tops, tops. Can you get the top tops? Game yes, is the, the emphatic head. answer. Showman darts from the Barbarian. And the former champion is turning on the style at the Super Series. Conan to throw first. Game on. And there's no signs of stopping. Have a look at the wall for Whitehead. What a sequence of darts that is. 54 tops, tops, starts the leg with a max. 58. And he's wanting more. And more. And more. 180. Do not say a word. 134. Conan, you require 141. What was it you were saying? <laughs> 45. He is laying a statement and a marker to the field here, Conan Whitehead, averaging just under 103. But it's not 54. just the statistics, it's Conan, the way that he's playing, the uber confidence that he's exuding on the stage. It was the 11 to 8 favourite to win 24. this group. See? And you're starting to see why. 24. Anything you can do? 180. Conan, you require. Oh, I can hit them as well, pal. Double six. 66. Not to be. Big moments in the match. Adam, you require 75. Remember, he was six into the nine. And despite the brilliance of the Barbarian, 55. Adam Hunt had a dart to level back up at two apiece. And to Conan, you require six. See out. Game the shot on the fourth leg. Conan, Whitehead. Card. And so 3-1, courtesy for 16 data. And Whitehead is on the hill. That means just Fifth one more is Adam to, throw to first. make it Game on. two from two. And he's been given an examination in both matches so far. 96. Adam Hunt, who played very well against Trina Gother, averaging over 91. He's, he's raised his game here. He's, he's averaging... Nearly 97. 100. 100. Don't forget you can be here Saturday night and you never know. Conan 94. might be here and he might actually hit the nine on Saturday night. Scan that QR code, it'll take you to dartshop.tv and that is how you can be here for the finale on Saturday night. I told you we were going to scan it, but 60. Conan got us all excited with the nine. If you don't have that facility, head over to www.dartshop.tv. Have a look around there. There's plenty of exhibitions, possibly in your own area. Also, 41. get tickets for the 
World Seniors Masters, 24th and 25th of June in Westlands, Yeovil. Myself One and Trina will be duking it out on the Saturday afternoon. Conan finds a fourth max. 85. Conan, you require 52. For the match and for a 4-1 victory. An impressive performance. 20. Not to be this time, but this 119 is a Hail Mary for Adam Hunt. And so one dart to save it at the ball. Game shot on the fifth Finds leg. the ball. Adam Hunt. And Adam Hunt is still in the hunt for the points here. Well, we've had a Sixth couple of wonderful finishes. First game on. The one three four in leg three. The one three eight in leg one from Adam and a one one nine on the ball. Forty one. Two legs one, and he's had to win both legs with Tub Plus checkouts because White had left himself handy in that previous leg on double 16 to get it wrapped up, having missed two darts at that target the visit before. One hundred. Eighty one. One hundred and forty. Another two treble visit. Yeah, three one forties, four maximums in this game. Ninety six. Power which Adam Hunt quite simply hasn't been able to keep up with. Not many can keep up with that kind of scoring power. 42. But is that a slip that opens up the door for the Durham Darter? 59. He's himself on a finish. The Whitehead is going to leave this very handy for the match. 138. Adam's going to have to take the 167 out to send us all the way. Well, he's produced a 138 and a. One one nine. Not this time. Ninety five. Conan, you require forty. Well, the spoils. Game. Tops Shot. found for Conan and Whitehead. Conan Whitehead. And what a performance that was. The champion from Series 1 is putting down a statement for the field. Two games played, two averages above the 90 mark. On this occasion, just a smidgen under 95. For the most part, it was above that as well. Thanks in part to four maximums. 50% on the doubles and a 1-3-4 checkout. Whitehead, top of the group then, having won both of his matches so far. Coming up next is Marvin Van Velsen and Trina Gulliver, both looking for their first victories. This is the Lotus Super Series. Whoa! 182 
Marvin Van Velzen and Trina Gulliver are up next and both looking for their first victory in Group C for Van Velzen. His finishing has been an issue all week, really. He missed another 12 at the outer ring in his opener today. Look forward to seeing how this one unfolds in the company of Henry and Mace. Thank you very much, Abby. And it is all about the response for both of these players to opening game defeats. Trina Gulliver losing out to Adam Hunt by four legs to one, whilst Marvin Van Velzen losing 4-2 to Jeremy Fay. This is the fifth game of 15 in this group, which means we are at the third way point of the action already. And, well, I think we're just recovering, Chris, from a stupendous last match. Yeah, outstanding from both, both players with very, very good averages. A match that had five 180s and three big ton plus finishes. And a bit of first showmanship Marvin from both. First. Game on. Ninety five. Eighty one. As you mentioned with Trina here at the Super Series, we usually see her best stuff in the middle of a session. Gets that first game out the way with and then builds from there. I'm not sure if Marvin 40. was actually born when Reno won her first world title. Back in 2001. 34. Winning it for seven consecutive years. Ten in total. Eighty-one. Five World Masters titles. World Trophy and five Dutch Opens. Twenty-eight. A resume that we would all dream of. Five Dutch Opens is probably as big an achievement as the rest of them as well because they that is the toughest Open in World Darts to win just by 59. sheer number of players that play in it. And it's Trina Gulliver, MBE. One of a very few list of people involved in the sport that can have that labelled after their name. The great late Eric Bristow. John Lowe now, of course. Ollie Croft. 60. Marvin, you require 160. Another one of them. Tots of Van Velzen. 140. What would have been a roof-raising start. He is going to come back for double 10. We've got over back on 180. 60. Marvin, you require 20. Game shot in the first leg. Marvin first Van leg Velzen. in the possession of Marvin Van Velzen. 19 dart to start. Second leg is Trina to throw first. Game on. The first to really settle. That 140 kind of the difference in that first leg. Other than that, they were kind of close together in the scoring department. 95. Trina also released a autobiography back in 2008. Titled The Golden Girl. 92. One hundred. You ever thought of uh, writing a autobiography, mate? <laughs> uh, I've 140. Got, I've, I've probably got half of it already done, but I don't know. I'd... I'm not sure. How much would be allowed to actually be published? 100. That's the problem. And listen, they're meant to be truthful and people just wouldn't believe it. 66. You just got to hope that the, uh, the sales out to the charges for the defamation cases. Well, maybe if I invested in a divorce lawyer, then... Uh... That might be the way forward. 60. I'd cause a few arguments, that's for sure. 
81. Trina, you require 146. 146 for Gulliver. Not going to happen. The Van Vels is going to return for 1 2 2 to break the throw and open up a 2 0 lead. 94. Marvin, you require 122. 418s. And ball. Forty-six. Trini require fifty-two. Given goes on the double. She's Game been quite effective. Case in Trina point Gulliver. there to level up at one apiece. She was one from four from the double attempts in that opening game against Adam. Third leg is Marvin. Taking her first, first opportunity on. on this occasion. One hundred and forty. Eighty-one. Myself and Trina, she won ranking titles on the same day. Irish Masters being one of them, the England Open the other. One hundred and thirty-five. Ninety-seven. People forget that Irish Masters you won was actually on the telly. It was. Good point. Well made, Henry. 134. Just invoice the tenor in the post tomorrow. <laughs> 100. Marvin, you require 92. Good luck, this one. 140, 135, 134. Game Ooh. shot in the third leg. His best Marvin leg Van of Hulten. the week. An 11 darter. Fourth leg, it's Trina to throw and first. Just like we've said about Bradley Rose, are we seeing the better Van Velsen in this second group? This is a really good performance. Struggled against Jeremy Fagg in the opening 16. game, but I felt like it was that type of game where both players were kind of just getting bogged down by each other almost. 46. But what Marvin can't afford to happen is allow that 11 data just to be a brilliant moment in isolation. 56. Yeah, not too much to separate the averages in their opening matches. Was there 79.96 for Marvin? 78.83 for Trina. 140. Averaging 82.64 currently as we come to the end of leg four. 60. And they're beginning to meet each other a little bit closer to halfway now as we reach the halfway point of the match. Are we going to be level at that particular juncture? It looks likely to be that. 100. Well, at this point in the previous leg, Van Velzen was about to win it and... In this leg, he's still stuck in the 300s. 125. Trainer, you require 101. To level things up. 81. 57.24. Oh, went for 45.36. 45. Should get two darts at tops upon a return. All Marvin can do is set up. To be fair, the setup play has actually been one of his strengths. He's done it again. Another big score to leave himself Trini something. Leaves himself on double 17. If Gulliver cannot convert the 56, it's two at tops. The rarely seen double 17 if he gets a go. 36. Will. This double is hit. 34. Least of any double on the board. And so he didn't go for it. Probably wishes he had now. Trina, you require 20. Yeah, then two darts at double 16 felt a little bit rushed. Another opportunity for Gulliver. Double five. 15. And she has now had five opportunities to win 32. this leg. And they've all come and gone. And Van Velzen returned to 32 for the break of throw and a 3-1 lead.
Moves across. Has a quick chat of himself, berating no himself, and he will berate himself even more. Trina, you require five. Shovel one, double one. No score. And so we continue. Marvin, you require 32. Well, this would be totally ironic in a leg that neither player 16. could find a double. That was one with a double-double. Trina, you require five. No score. And sometimes they say in this scenario, the hardest one to hit is the Marvin, single. Marvin, you require 16. Game shot on the fourth leg. Marvin Van Velten. Well, he went from an 11 darter. Just the 16 darts longer, that one. Another leg longer, Fifth really. Leg, it's Marvin to throw first. 27 Game dart on. break of throw. Trina will be fuming. Wow. 51. Nine. Forty-five. And the struggles at the end of the last leg are becoming something that's just creeping into this one. Seventy-six. Well, yeah. You're naturally disappointed and frustrated, and that's not a a good mixture of emotions 95. to have. You feel like that sting's gone, but Trina's been able to... 125. Better than Marvin, be able to gather some recomposure. 45. Thirty-six. Thirty-two. One hundred and four. Excellent last start, managing to squeeze in a second treble to leave herself on one one five to bring it back to three two. But this has been the part of the leg Marv has been so good at. Unlucky with a bounce out there with a second dart. Sixty-two. Oh, it's just taking a Trina, bit of pressure off this. One one five for Trina. Annoyed, long way off that. 76, trouble 20 for double eight. 59. Giving herself on 56 again. Now how that ended in the previous leg. 57. Trainee require 56. For the break in three, two. Two at tops. That's a nice marker. 16. Inviting marker, two good darts, but neither could find the target. Marvin and so, for the match, 114 for Van Velzen. After all the trials and tribulations, I wouldn't be shocked if this goes in. 57 leaves 57. That leaves tops. 94. Training, you require 40. To reduce the deficit to one. Tens. Game shot in the pin to the bottom Trina corner, Gulliver. and Gulliver brings it back to three two. Well, it wasn't top bins; it was bottom bins. Six leg is Trina to throw first. Game on.
Someone's been on YouTube. <laughs> Eighty-one. Charlotte's little fella, Ruben, comes running down the stairs after playing on his PS5, going on about sticking one in top bins from 30 yards. Right Eighty-seven. Out. I know you'll be truly be listening when someone's when you say that someone's on flames. Well, that's a game 80. is lit. Forty. What's the other one? Something bougie. Is it bougie when they, they talk about? Then something's ninety-seven. Begins with B anyway. One hundred. Sure someone an apprentice task was saying apparently it was the it's the it's the in thing. Apparently, if something's up market, it's very bougie. One hundred and twenty-five. Forty-three. Trina, looking good. Trina, you require one hundred and eighteen. Level things up. Fifty-eight. Not quite there yet, but credit where it's due. You picked this one out to be a bit of a surprise, didn't you? Or a bit of a shock result. You liked Trina at seven to four. I just thought for what she's won, and you look at both players comparatively on the head-to-head, -head, seven to four is just 16. way too big a price. Looks as if we might be going all the way to a decider. It's tops again for Trina. Game shot. Bound, free free. Trina we go Gulliver. all the way again. And of the games he's seen so far today... The last four, four three, four two, Seven four two, and Marvin this one's going to gonna go first. four three on. in one of which direction? But whose direction is it going to be four three in? Seventy three. It hasn't been vintage, but both players will. No, if they can get over the line, they've worked for these two points and they've got something to build themselves in terms of the group. The loser will be two down in that rule of three. 30. Well, apart from leg four, it's not been horrible, that's for sure. It's that one leg has... 59. Been relative to the numbers. One hundred and four. After this, Bradley voting and Jeremy Fag. Then we're going to be joining our friends on Sporty Stuff TV from three o'clock. Sixty. Sixty-one points to lead plus these. Forty-four. I don't think uh, Marvin's particularly enjoyed this one too much. One of those where I just want to get back to the practice room and go again for their next battles. 78. So, 6 from 214 for Marvin. How many times in this part of the leg does he come up with his best scoring visit of the leg? Now that's a good trait to have. 45. And that might be the visit Marvin, that puts pay to Gulliver's chances of picking up the points in this one. 76 of Van Velzen to get the job done. And he's got six darts in which to do it. 40. 121. That would have been so typical of Trina. Marvin, you require 36. Maybe 
Just enough pressure. Eighteen. Katrina, all barring a disaster. Katrina, you require seventy-five. Should get at least one die at tops. Double seventeen is the shot for double twelve, and gets it. One left. Fifty-one. Not to be for Trina, and so Van Velzen returns. Marvin, you require eighteen. A double nine to pick the points up. Nine. Well, that's the danger if you don't really attack with dark Trina, one. Trina, you require twenty-four. You're almost scared to go at it in dark two, and over-adjusted with dark three. Fifteen left, seven for double four, three for double six. Double six. No score. Marvin so Van Velsen returns. Both players missing opportunity to get this game won. Double four. Now twos. Five. It's another chance of Gulliver. 24. It's another chance of double 12. Game. And it Shot. is Trina Time who match. picks up the Trina points. Gulliver. Gulliver gets the better of Van Velzen by four legs to three in a decider. A game played by Miss Doubles in the end, but it's Gulliver who picks the points up. Next up, Bradley Rose, Jeremy Fack. Well, we said yesterday that there were encouraging signs for Bradley Roos as he picked up three wins. He put in a much improved performance, albeit in defeat, in his opener today. His best of the week, actually, a 91 and a half average. Can he build on that here to get a win of the day, a first win of the day against Jeremy Fagg? Let's find out and get back to the chaps in comms. Thank you very much, Abby. So, Jeremy Fagg against Bradley Rose, our next match on offer here. And the Early news we can tell you ahead of this one. There's a, another change of equipment for Jeremy Fagg. We reported to you in the first game that he's phone with a Michael Smith 23-gram dart. He's now changed to the, what looks like an RVB dart. That's a Bradley Rose, the 18-year-old from The Hague. 
WDF Youth World Champion in 2022. We'll be hoping, won't be defending that title because of the fact that he is now over the eligible age to play in that competition. But a change of equipment here for Jeremy Fagg. Yeah, we'll get a, a look at the darts when first leg is Bradley to throw first. This match gets underway. One hundred and forty. We've seen some changes from Bradley, but not with the dart. And yes, they are. They're all Barney dart, and they're one hundred and forty. I think like. The ones he used in the opening match, are they? But they're completely different in terms of grip, in terms of shape. Pretty much the whole, as you said, the whole component of the dart is different. But these were the darts he was using throughout the course of last week. Had a little bit of a tinker in game one. Decided it's not for him. 57. 95. I'm sure Bradley will be buoyed by the way he's played in his final match of the session yesterday, which is another win over the winner of Group A, Neil Duff. He averaged over 90 in that one. Averaged 91.68 in his opening match against Conan, just edged out 4-3. 60. And to be perfectly honest, he didn't really do much wrong in that game, Bradley. He was just on the wrong end of Conan at his rip drawing best, and he's looking as Bradley if he's going to be the player to beat in this group. Bradley Rose then, 148 to take the opening leg of this one. Not to be done on this occasion, and so Jeremy returns, 60. hoping that leg one is as 123. easy as 1 2 3. 16 and ball. Ooh. 83. Don't miss the big number is what Harrington Bradley would say. 88. 18. Could have left the ball, but again, it's a misdrain, the big number to 48. deny yourself a go Jeremy at the middle of the 40. diddle. So both back on tops. Fag with first go. Game and Fag with the day. find, and Jeremy it is a break Fag. of throw for Jeremy Fag at the beginning of this one to lead Bradley Rose by a leg to nil. 17, hopefully Second going under. Jeremy to throw first. Put the man on. down under. 100. Sixty. Jeremy, our representative from ADC Oceania. He's not going to be the last of our 60. representatives from that region. Looking forward to having Gigi back. He's announced that he's going to be playing at the Super Series. Gordon Mavers. Oh, brilliant. 100. Gigi, part of our original team. of our original spotters, wasn't he? 100. Couldn't actually play at that time because he had a tour card. Yeah, he kind of adopted this role of uh, Super Series Handyman, didn't he? He was adaptable to a number of different roles. 93. 140. Better performance so far, this from Jeremy. Equipment change. Certainly part of that, in my opinion. 100. Jeremy require 101. 101. Oh, finds the ball. Double 16. Oof. 85. A whisker Bradley of a wire away. Rose then needing this 148. 
Been left with crumbs in this second leg, and crumbs he can't pick up upon, and so. Jezza is back for double eight. Jeremy requires 16. Game and 2 0 it is. Leg. Jeremy Fagg. 16 data. Good performance this so far from Jeremy Fagg. 91 average, 2 out of 4 when it's come to the finishing. Third leg is Bradley. He's 2 0. Game on. 17 in the opening leg. 16 in that one. 15 data incoming. One hundred and forty. Well, why not hope for something a bit better? One hundred and eighty. Mark Conan threatened to produce the nine. One hundred. Maybe just pretend it's not a thing and maybe it'll happen. 96. Two one forties in three visits for Bradley Rose leaves himself on one two one after nine. Ninety six. Bradley you require one hundred and twenty one. Shovel 17. The ball's eye. 78. Not quite to be Jeremy for Bradley. 129. Well, he's already scared the 129 in this game, Jeremy has. Gonna find that Shovel 20, though, to leave him the ball's eye. And that is dangling in that double 18. Treble Bradley 18, shall I say. 43. Yeah, to leave the double 18. So there's pressure on the 43. 11 for double 16. Game Finds shot it. on the third leg. Bradley Rose. It wasn't a 15. It was better as you suggested. Henry, it was a 14 dart hold. Fourth leg is I know Jeremy what sort of legs first. they should have. I just don't know where the target areas are. I have a feeling that's going on the outtake bingo. To be honest, the outtake bingo is pretty much anything I do, isn't it? Looking forward to that being played at the Christmas party. 55. As long as you don't sing, it'll all be good. Gee, fair, probably wouldn't matter. I've got to remember it first. 100 60 Bradley's first of the match What's in the issue of Fag? Who looks set to respond. 171. In likewise fashion. This is brimming up. One hundred and thirty-four. Jeremy requiring ninety. The bull. 65. 25 found. And so Bradley Rose for Bradley 13 data. To continue this trend of legs getting better and better as the game goes on. Game the trend on continues 2-2. We started off at 17. We moved down to 16. Then down to 14. Now to 13. Fifth leg is Bradley to throw first. Game on. So we're expecting a 12 here, Mace. Yeah, and that was the break back that Bradley needed. What's impressed me most is the average of Jeremy Fagg up round 
late 90s, but Bradley's... 42. Repeating that performance from his opening match. He's up over 91 again. 134. Sixty. However, is the hard work of a crew in that back beginning to just get undone a little bit as Jeremy just begins to chip away and chip away at him? Well, the one eighty was followed by a one three four, and then double in one. Since then. Three visits to the board with no big troubles. 59. Well, I've got some bad news for you, folks. The trend of legs getting better is going to end there. 16. Fifty-six. So Jeremy leaving himself one five two to reclaim the break and to throw for the match in the next. Six. He's going to get six on this point. Jeremy require one hundred and fifty-two. He's going to need the six. Sixty. A 140 here could make things interesting. 140. Jeremy require 92. Uh, 92 for Jeremy. Is he going to attack or is he going to go for the bullseye? The bullseye is exactly what he goes for. And so, as consequence, gives himself one dart in the middle. 54. Didn't even scare it. Bradley, you require It was awkward at to move, which changes things massively. Double 13. Game shot on the fifth leg. Bradley Big dart Rose. and a bit of a G up in celebration as well for Bradley Rose. Bit of a Gezi Price Guan, wasn't it? Six I hear one or two of them tonight. First. Game on. Premier League finals night at the O2 in London. Who's going to have the name on the pot? 81. Going Price, Johnny Caton, and the two Michael Smith and Van Gerwen fighting it out for the glory. Van Gerwen defending the title that he won 12 months ago at the Mercedes Benz 59. Arena in Berlin, beating Joe Cullen in a last leg to sign. That was after Cullen missed a dart himself to lift that particular title. 100. And then, World Series time after the European Tour. Yep, off to New York next weekend, or next Friday and Saturday. 85. That's the question. Who's going to have that empire state of mind when it comes to the hockey? 60. The odds for tonight's matches: Gezi Price three to ten, Sixty. Johnny Clayton five to two, and Michael Smith against Michael Van Gerwen. They go ten to eleven. You wouldn't touch that second one, would you? 96. Just leave that alone and enjoy it. Gezi's the right favourite. Fifty nine. Jeremy require one hundred and sixty four. So to send us to a decider again. Sixty four. Looking good to level things up. 
60. Jeremy, you require 100. Just couldn't find the trouble. Right on the wire, those two. 60. That leaves tops, and we'll return. Thirty-nine. So to send us Jeremy the distance, Jeremy Fag wants tops for free, free. And Game once again, we're going all Jeremy the way. Fag. Kind of been the story of the day, the story of the group so far. Hard to prize these players apart. Seven fan final leg. It's Bradley to throw first. Still Game remains on. a substantial gap in the averages. Jeremy, just shy of ninety. Bradley. 58. 92. Well, has the darts in the decider, but not the start he would have wanted. And nods behind as if to say, yeah, knew this was coming. 120. One hundred and forty. Excellent time forty for Bradley Rose. You'll shortly be joining our friends over at Sporty Stuff TV as we conclude our sixth game of the session. Ninety-five. Fifty-nine. One hundred. Just keeping his nose in front. Fifty-nine. So six darts from one eight six for Jeremy Fag to get the job done in this particular match. And it looks as if he's going to set it up very handily 96. indeed. A very warm welcome to viewers joining us here on Sporty Stuff TV. You join us in the midst of battle here between Bradley Rose and Jeremy Fagg. It's currently three legs apiece in our sixth game of the day. Jeremy Fagg leaving himself 90 after 12 darts 16. to pick up a victory. It'd be a second consecutive Jeremy victory for him 90. after beating Marvin Van Velzen in his first game of the day. As of Bradley Rose defeated by Conan Whitehead in a last leg decider, he could be defeated again if Jeremy Fagg can find double 15. 16. But he can't. Chris Mason alongside myself, Henry Bradley Deacon in the country box. Big moment come and gone there for Jeremy Fagg. Yeah, absolutely. Good afternoon, everybody. Should be going ball. That leaves a ton. That leaves tops for the steal. Game. And he shot. gets it. And, and what match, a way Burs. to end the match. 125 out, and he picks up his first victory of the day. Average of 82.97. 90.48 in defeat for Jeremy Fagg. And the highlight there, the finishing four out of five for Bradley Rose. And that wonderful one, two, five finish to end it. Well, when we come back, it will be Adam Hunt against Marvin Van Velzen.
Hello and welcome back to the Moda Super Series. Six games in to today's action, as you just saw, the end of the Jeremy against Bradley match there. We're going to have a little look at the results that have come in already today. There you can see Trina Gulliver going down 4-1 to Adam Hunt in that opening game. Six games in, as I said, and it's the Group C favourite, Conan Whitehead, who is top of the table, having won his opening two matches. Already a significant improvement in the overall standard today. Plenty of averages in the 90s. It really has been an improvement from the Group A campaign. Those players who've come into to this group in Marvin Van Velzen, Bradley Roos and Adam Hunt have really upped their level coming into this and it is making for intriguing viewing. We'll have a little look at the league standings at this point. As I mentioned, Conan Whitehead victorious in his opening two matches, two matches where he's averaged in excess of 90 as well. So it really is intriguing. Jeremy Fagg there on the two points at the moment. Adam Hunt third in the table and it is Adam Hunt Hunt against Marvin Van Velzen. Next up, their fourth meeting of the week, and it is Hunt who leads the head-to-head 2-1, -head having come through with a whitewash victory yesterday. So to see how this one unfolds, let's return to the Chaps in Comms. Thank you very much, Abby Henry Deacon, alongside Chris Mason for all of the commentary for you throughout the rest of the afternoon here at the Live Lounge in Portsmouth. Adam Hunt then in action against Marvin Van Velzen in Game 7 of our session here at the Live Lounge in Portsmouth. Well, Adam's been quite impressive today. Averages of 91 and 92 respectively. The 92, though, coming in defeat to Conan Whitehead. Both of the legs he won in that particular match came with ton plus checkouts. Whilst, on the other hand, as far as Marvin Van Velzen's concerned, it's been a day that's been played by Miss Doubles. The only player yet to pick up a point so far today here in Group C, and in the space of two matches, has missed 32 darts a double. Doesn't need me to say that that's got to be improved. First leg, it's Adam to throw first. Game on. Absolutely, pal. That's effectively two legs of darts thrown at doubles. I don't think he will 60. get away with that against Adam Hunt here, who's going to be pleased with his performances so far in 82. his opening match he defeated Trina 4-1 with a 91-46 3 180s did miss a few at double 14 in total 41 and another really good performance against a very very good Conan Whitehead who defeated Adam 4-2 with a 94-82 4 180s 50% on the doubles and a high finish of 134 only trumped by Adam Hunt who in defeat Average 92.33 was two out of three on the 59. doubles. That took out finishes of 119 and 138. We're going to see Conan White up next against Jeremy Fagg for viewers joining us on Sporty Stuff TV. Thank you to those of you who are still tuning in to us via the Moda Super Series YouTube channel. Don't forget to give us a subscribe on there because on top of the live action they're going to be bringing to you six days a week, we've got bonus content Highlights of every single session, as well as those exclusive interviews which you'll be putting up on the channel every now and then. Don't forget to get in touch with us 95. on Twitter, at MSS Darts, and we'll read out all of your text, tweets, and communications. 43, Adam, you require 106. So 106 for Adam Hunt to take the opening leg. Tops. 86. Marvin, you require 124. I would hope to win a, a lot lower than this after a 43 from 167, but. 78. It's the opportunity at the ball, but. Adam, you require 20. Long way off. 20. That's edging closer. 10. Then further away. And so Van Velzen Marvin, gets the opportunity 46. at 46 to take the lead and get the break of throw, which in the context of the opening of this match, Game well, Adam leg. Hunt Marvin was in Van cruise Velsen. control in the scoring phase, but Van Velzen has taken it in the end, breaking the throw of the man from Chester Le Street to lead 1-0. Second leg is Marvin to throw first. Game on.
95. Eighty two, fifty five. I don't looking to and hit straight back and one hundred break the throw of Van Belzen. Get us back on throw. 85. It's four darts at Dublin, that opening leg Adam to give a hold of it. Dominant in the scoring phase of the first leg. 137. And that 137 gives himself a slender lead in this second leg against the darts. And 45. Going to get six darts on 182 to level proceedings up. Could be, should be 2 0 up. 41. That was a, a real wild one from Adam Hunt. 91. Adam, you require 141. He's already treated us to a 138. He's coming down to go up. But he can't find the treble 20, which would have left him double 12. And so, we look at the 13s here. Well, down for the 19. So, 130 Marvin for Marvin Van Belzen. 130. Ooh, nearly gets that 54. adjustment Adam required, but 60. straight left. Tops. Game shot level game, no there. mistake this Adam time. Hunt. Adam Hunt levels up at one apiece. 17 data, that one. Third leg is Adam to throw first. Game on. And you feel that's the least that his efforts and exploits in this game deserves. 46. We're entering that point now in the group where well, Van Velzen, who's lost his opening two games, where the 16. rule of three becomes applied because if he loses this one, then his chances of getting through to Saturday night look incredibly slender. 14 points 57. is usually barometer towards qualification through to the finale on Saturday evening, which you can come to by scanning the QR code, 20. which sends you over to dartshop.tv. And you can book tickets for pretty much any week in this phase. So if there's a particular Saturday where you're thinking, do you know what? I fancy a Saturday down the south coast, a little bit of sun, Maybe a couple of drinks, nice bit of food. And do you know what? Let's have some darts thrown in for good measure. That's the QR code you need to scan for your excuse for a good weekend away. 135. If you don't have that facility, head over to www.dartshop.tv. All the ticket information over there. Third, well, fourth meeting between these two. We've already met three times in Group A on Monday. 81. It's a tight win for Adam. Ball three. The return match. 41. On Tuesday, it was a full three win for Marvin. 100. However, it was a 4 nil win for Adam yesterday. Sixty-seven. Adam, you require ninety-two. Got two on lead. He's got six from ninety-two. Level seventeen. And then been able to recover with the last down tops. Should get two upon his next return. For those of you that have joined us on Sporty Stuff TV, don't forget double session day. Ninety-six. Thursday and Friday. We're back tonight with Adam, highly anticipated 16. Group B from ten p.m. Level 10, Game shot found, the otherwise Van Velsen was lurking on 82. 2-1 to Adam. Yeah, we're looking forward to that group B tonight, aren't we? Andy Jenkins, Matt Denham, Johnny Haynes, 
entering the action. Players with proven pedigree in this competition. 134. Jenks has already had a, you know, a bit of a run out in this particular series. Stood in for the injured Sven Verdonk last week. 100. Now Cullerton also in the group tonight and very impressive debutant Stuart White. 137. Yeah, I must say, I really do like the look of him. A fantastic find by the ADC. 135. If you fancy yourself to join us here at the Super Series and you think that you've got the game to compete with some of the best in amateur darts, then have a look over on the ADC website. It's dartcircuit.co.uk and you can see where you can sign up for the Local Vault Series, which takes place in midweeks across different venues across the country. 58. Some of the best players from that, as well as winners of the Open Series, which returns to Middlesbrough on the 1st and 2nd of July, will participate here at the Super Series later 66. on in 2023. As Bradley Walsh would say, come and have a go if you think you're good enough. Absolutely. 44. Marvin, you require one. Just not out of plain Spider Man pajamas. <laughs> Bullseye. 105. Not to be. And Adam, so, you require 164 for Adam Hunt. Another. But he couldn't find the second trouble to have his own go with the ball. 135. Marvin, you require 25. Just ask the question, though, and Van Vell's in. Van Velsen's Dublin has been not 21. good. Adam, you require 29. A free one. No score. Wrong bet. Marvin, you require Paul four. Paul Hogan. Can he work his way up? Can he work his way in? Game shot on the fourth yes, he leg. can. Marvin two, Van two. Courtesy, a double two. Double Desmond. Quite no hurry. Fifth leg is Adam to throw first. Found Game a way on. in there. One hundred and thirty-four. Ninety-seven. Ninety-seven. Forty. That first start for Adam is absolutely perfect. It's followed by a second, almost followed by a third, but leaves himself on a finish after nine. Good response, this. 54, Adam, Three, four, 97, 140 in the scoring phase of the leg. Going to be forced into going for the ball. 65. Went for the ball to leave tops. He's going to get the luxury of time to do exactly that. Six starts if he so Adam wants it. Requires 65. Uh, double 16. 33. He's going to come back. Not a darting disaster. 57. Adam, you require 32. Still got. Minimum of six at this, if required. 16. And we said it before this week, when that dart on the double 16 comes inside, because of the way his darts stand up and because of the long stem he has, that next dart at double 100. eight is so tricky. You're almost throwing it blind. Adam, you require 16. That can cause a, a bit of an issue. Game shot on the fifth Not leg. This time. Adam Hunt. Finds the double eight, back in front again. Sixth leg is Marvin to throw first, game on.
And so Van Velzen is in that position again where he is staring defeat in the face. 93. One hundred and four. In fact, his last victory came game one yesterday when he got the better of Bradley Rose for free. That was that really cagey opener for both players. So if he loses this one, it will be seven defeats on the spin. And then as things stand, Adam Hunt is making a run towards the finishing line. Forty-four. Finding it tough going. And as you say, a defeat here. Almost. Forty-two. Puts him in a can't afford to lose another match situation. It's only the top two from this group C that progress. One hundred and twenty-five. Neil Duff, our winner Adam, of you require Group A, safely through. Saturday night's final. Ninety-nine. Marvin, you require one hundred and fourteen. Creative. Don't mind that one little bit. The bull. Eighty-nine. And so Adam, you require fourteen. For thirteen data to finish. Adam Hunt wants tops, and now double ten. Chasing fives. 35. Not to be. And Van Velzen for Marvin, free free. 25. Oh, look, he's chasing rainbows. Game shot on the sixth he's, leg. He's Marvin playing. Van Velzen. Marvin in pretty much every department. Just can't put him away. Seventh and final leg. It's Adam to throw first. He's had game darts. On. He's had opportunities. He's had free to get the game done. And for the third game on the 140. spin, 140 going all the way. In fact, since game one, which is a four-one victory for Adam against Trina Gulliver, Marvin Van Velden kicks off Max. Every game has gone four-two or longer. 96. We'll have to order the dinner in tonight, Max. 41. 133. 133 to leave 132. And maybe we'll have a little bit of a champagne finish. Well, it depends. Well, we'll be going Adam for it Newcar, now. 132. Marvin Haft's his score. Trouble 19. Leaves the ball. And it's an open target. 82. Oh, sorry. 97. Jack 97. Well, Marvin Adam Newcar, Hunt missed the ball side for his own roof raising finish. Can Marvin Van Velzen finish? With something quite spectacular, he went tops, tops. 120. Adam, you Couldn't find 35. the tops, tops. And so 35 for Adam Hunt to get the job done and to condemn Van Velzen to a third, street, third defeat 19. in a row. Marvin, you require 20. That's when we turn to double 10. 5s. Game. For Shot. victory and the match, for Marvin Van Velzen, who gets the better of Adam Hunt in a decider by four legs to three. That means that every player now is on the board in terms of victories, getting the better of Adam, who statistically was the better player throughout. But as you can see, missed doubles, 17 of them in the end came back to plague him. So Van Velzen, a 4-3 victor. And after the break, this could be a classic at the Super Series as Conan Whitehead takes on Jeremy Fagg. Meet Rob's Grand Mary. She loves nothing more than a day at the seaside. And an ice cream. And Rob, well, he wouldn't miss it for the world. 
By taking time outs on his account, he's making time for moments that really matter. Winner. Setting it up is simple. Choose from days to weeks at a time or customize it. When you play, play safe at Bet365. Conan Whitehead and Jeremy Fagg next up this afternoon. Whitehead put in a marker down already today. He's won his opening two games with averages north of 90. Piled in four 180s in his last match. Attempted a three tops finish before taking out a 1-3-4 in the next leg. But aside from that, it's been a pretty uneventful start for the champ. To see what he treats us to in this one, let's get back to Mason Henry. Thanks, Abby. Yeah, another one of these matches where we feel there could be Fireworks. Conan Whitehead, the only unbeaten player now. He's on four points. Rest of the field all on two. And so at this particular point, he can really take command of proceedings and justify everything that the bookmakers said at the beginning of the day. They had him as a very heavy favourite to go on and, and win this Group C. I actually had him as the joint favourite to win the week first at leg is Conan to 4 to first. 1. Game on. And he's certainly lived up to the type and the billing. 11 to 8 he was to win this group. Jeremy Fagg, the second favourite to 5 to 2 with the odds compilers at the beginning of play. 140. And White had joint favourite 4 to 1 for the week alongside Neil Duff. They tend to do that with a Group A winner. And Neil Duff has got that pedigree as well to Go on and lift this title. And Matthew Dennant as well, who we're going to see later on this evening. And he's had a couple of cliches himself as a scholar. 100. Yeah, he's certainly the type of player that you'd expect to really blossom in this environment and, and win titles. 100. Maybe it will be this week. One thing we have been seeing a lot of today, that's maximums are calculated up 17 in seven games. 100. It's because there's been so many legs. 100. Yeah, we definitely have windows of opportunities today, haven't we? 57. Conan, you require 161. We're getting well acquainted with each other, Mace, this week. I've more time with you than I do my missus. 129. I think we should leave it there. Elected against checking out the 161 there, Conan, with Jeremy back on 204. Yeah, sign of respect for, for Jeremy, that. Conan, you require 32. Not prepared to take any risks. Playing the percentages. Game shot in the first leg. Conan Whitehead. Starts the match. With a 15 dart hold. Jeremy limited to just 12 darts Second in the leg. Is Jeremy to throw first. Game on. Yeah, that double 16, a double that he has a good affinity with at the Super Series. That was the one. They won in the title against Graham Usher back in October. 93. I think one of the nicest traits about Conan is how... It was such a big achievement. It's a big achievement for anyone to win one 41. of these. But it's the fact that he can win a title like this, but still, even though he's proud of it, can still feel laid back about it. As in, it was just another 
game of darts ultimately and he does three Hit darts of that eight. that of course that will to win but with that laissez-faire attitude as well yeah i mean you, you could see how much it meant to him at the time 85 it's a large amount of money and you combine that with his weekly win that got him into Champions Week, and then his appearance money is well over thirty thousand pounds. Seventy-eight, not to be sniffed at. And the opportunities that follow you as well, the press attention that you get. I know Luke Little he got a lot 100. of press attention a couple of weeks ago after winning that, and who's to say you know potential sponsors, even ex exhibitions, things like that, because you're going to be front and centre in front of the cameras and. If you put in a good impression, someone may say, would you know what? We'll give him a go on this. Absolutely. Especially with shots like the 134 earlier. 100. And the attempted 123 tops. Commentators lose voices over that. 97. Otherwise known as the Jose de Souza. 137. Jeremy Three requires. 7 to leave himself on double 19. 92 for Jeremy. And for the balls, I both players show full respect to each other here. Maybe feel that they're the big opposition to win this group as Jeremy goes to the bullseye. 45. Dips just underneath. Can and so Whitehead returns for a 2 0 lead. Splits it. Double 16 again. 20. Jeremy, you require 47. 15 for double 16. Or seven tops. Game shot in the second Chose leg. Tops. Jeremy Fag. Chose tops wisely. Leg that got away there from Conan. Two darts Third at leg double 16 to for 2 0. Game on. And are there moments going to be the one that changes the tide in one way or another? 16. This feels like a game that's going to be won or lost on small margins going one way or t'other. And even that treble start from Conan could be severely punished upon. Well, is punished upon. You can have a look at Conan's side on action. Yeah, rock solid. 140. Just every component about the throw to be consistent, isn't it? There's not much that variates. That's probably why he has very few what we'd call 18. poor performances. I mean, normally you'll have the odd stinker here or there. 60. Fifty-seven. One hundred. Tan leads him on a finish after twelve. And we could do with a couple of trebles here. We'll head down for cover. Fifty-six. Conan, you require one hundred and forty-one. Couldn't do it for the nine. Can he do it here? Oh, this is the 45 for 36. Good luck this weekend as well to our 85. Good friend and colleague, Charlie Kulstefin, who's refereeing at the Euro Tour over in Germany. Yeah, brilliant to see Charlie get that opportunity. Only require 56. Doing some great stuff. Referee UK Open semi final, didn't he, this year? Game shot in the third leg. Conan Whitehead. Referee some quality darts. That was some quality darts there for Conan Whitehead to open up a 2-1 lead. Got a couple of super series Fourth friends. Haven't we out in Sindel Fingham this on. weekend? Glenn's out there. Merce out there. Charlie's out there. No doubt Owen's out there, is he? I don't know. We'll know if he's out there. Put it that way. Did you know he went to Bahrain? No, never mentioned it.
He was in a famous 94. TikTok video over overnight. Was he? And he's friends of a famous TikToker. Oh, right. What are they? What's a TikToker? Were you going to say, what's a friend? <laughs> 100. Are they like influencers or something? Pretty much. 180. Not that I've ever ever been on a TikTok or well, I've been on a TikTok. I've never been on TikTok. Ninety-nine. Is it painful? It's it never ends well for me, does it? So sixty. Put it this way, it was poking fun at me. We are on TikTok, the Moda Super Series. So give us a follow on there if you're one of those that enjoy the TikTok game. And once again, Conan Whitehead showing respect to the Jeremy Fag game. Well, there may be a little bit too much respect with Fag on 150. Jeremy require 150. I was basically saying, I don't believe you can take out 150, or maybe he didn't. Actually, no, he was down on a finish. 58. I think his facial Tony reaction may have said 32. that he may have just overlooked the finish a little bit there. So, for 3-1 lead, once again, it's double 16 for no Conan. Score. Not to be for Conan. Oh, he's now missed Jeremy seven at a double, 92. and it feels like the majority of those have been at double 16. Well, we've been here before. Different route this time. Doesn't need the bullseye. Game Just needs the, the double leg. eight. Jeremy Great leg. for Jeremy. Back to 2-2. Two, two. And once again. Fifth leg is coming. Looks set to possibly to go on. the distance. Theme of the day. 100. Conan will be getting a little perturbed with how this match is going because he just keeps letting Jeremy back in. 58. 60. First max of the match for Jeremy Fagg. What a crucial time that may be against the Conan Whitehead darts. But Conan comes back with a two treble visit of his own. Well, two big treble visit of his own. And in terms of the scoring phase, Conan Whitehead's had 13 scores of a ton or more. 59. Seven for Jeremy. But Jeremy's finishing two from three. Conan. Two from nine. 140. That is where the damage is being done. But when you score to the kind of tune that Conan Whitehead is in this match, you do afford yourself those opportunities. Can he take it in this leg? 78 is 46. what he wants. Conan, you require 78. 75 left. Has a little glance over at the Jeremy Fag scoreboard, who needs 158. 38. Jeremy Tops if he comes back. Is this going to be a big mid-match moment for Jeremy Fagg? Another one of them. Well, he keeps taking a, a few risks. A puff of the cheeks for Conan as if to say, oof, that was a little bit too close. 123. Conan, you require 40. Huge moments in the middle of this match. Game shot in the fifth leg. Conan Whitehead. Nothing wrong with double 10. Just the double 16, which is causing Sixth him the dramas. To throw first. Game on. But despite the max in the leg, a 17 dart hold for Conan. Keeps just putting his nose in front. 78. Can he convert the lead into a victory and make it? Three from three. 85. This would be a typical match play performance from 
Conan Whitehead. One hundred. Because Jeremy himself has given as good as he can get. Second max. One never in doubt. There was never any doubt in the mind of Conan Whitehead. Little bit of peacockery from the barbarian. Yeah, once that first one goes in and sits up. They always fancy him to follow and fill it. 121. Oh, that's a super reply. Ninety. Conan is going to get first poker to finish to win the match, but Jeremy can leave it much more handier. Fifty-six. Conan, you require one hundred and forty-six. One forty-six. Conan, first go to win the match, not to beat. And so Jeremy, the same score to 90. save the match. And you Jeremy feel the way that Cone has been on tops, this may have to go. Could be Hail Mary time. Oh, just underneath. And so Cone and Whitehead should get two darts now to get this game one for two. 58. Cone and you require 56. Ooh. Gets the nine. Now only going to get one. That's Game. all he needs sure. is match, the one. Conan Whitehead. Closes the show with a 15 dart break of throw. The first break of throw of the match. A couple of 180s for Conan. An end average of 91-42. And 15 scores of a ton or more. He makes it three from three. Moves on to six points when we come back after a short break. Trina Gulliver back in action against Bradley Rose. Catch the best thoroughbred racing from South Africa alongside 15 live greyhound races at 11 o'clock every Tuesday, Thursday and Friday morning live here on Sporty Stuff TV. Welcome back to the Moda Super Series where Conan Whitehead has just picked up his third victory of the day. A 4-2 success over Jeremy Fagg with another average, as you can see there, north of 90. Add in another two 180s to his tally for the day, taking him to seven so far. Next up, we've got Trina Gulliver and Bradley Roos going head to head. Roos, of course, getting his first win in Group C last time out, coming through a decider to get the better of Fag. Can he build on that here against the Golden Girl, who is also looking to move on to four points? Let's get into the action with H and Mace. Thank you very much, Abby. Yeah, how impressive has Conan Whitehead been so far today? And 91.42 was his lowest average of the session so far. That's the sort of standard he's been playing at. And, well, because of it, in terms of the lead table, he's got a four-point lead on everybody else. Although that is going to be cut down to two points by the victor in this particular battle as Trina Gulliver takes on Bradley Rose. Yeah, this is our final match of the third cycle of games. Once it's completed, all the players with two more to play. Conan Whitehead currently sitting at the top. His final two. Um, one will be against Marvin, and I can't see Marvin First getting too Trina much out of that first. one. And then his Game final one. match is against Trina Gulliver. And when we... Four. 
Forty-two. Let me look at the the numbers again. Hard to see. Conan, not going through the card today. Five from five. Well, there is a potential if Trina wins this game and then it's victory in the next one against Jeremy Fag. That it could be the battle of the top two going into the overnight. 60. And don't forget, we're back tonight. Thursdays is a double day of darting delights at the Super Series. 43. B gets underway. We're all ready for Group B, aren't we, mate? Should be a good night of darts. Andy Jenkins, Matt Dennant, Johnny Haynes entering the fray alongside Niall Cullerton and Stuart White. The action gets underway from 10 o'clock on Sporty Stuff TV and the Super Series YouTube channel. The top three from that group will join the top two from this group. And Neil Duff in Saturday night's final. And you can join us. Scan that QR code. It'll get you tickets to dartshop.tv. You can book tickets for this Saturday and any Saturday 100. in Series 4. Finals night at Champions Week. Just a little bit of a forward note for you. Is on Saturday, August the 5th. 140. Be quick if you want to come to that one. Uh, every Saturday night, equally as enjoyable here at the Live Lounge. London Road in Portsmouth. Plenty of... Bradley require 44. Hotels and restaurants locally. Make a weekend 12. of it. Bit of shopping Trini down. require 156. Gunners Wharf. And then maybe a bit of... Bit of afternoon down the Solent. You love a bit of Paul Solent, don't you, mate? Love a bit of Paul Solent, mate. Bradley, you require My 32. one, it doesn't. <laughs> Two six Ds of Bradley Rose. Game shot in the first the break of throw Bradley and a one nil lead. Well, a ton 40s in there, to throw cut first. over the line of his fourth dart at the double. One hundred. Certainly seeing a better version of Bradley today. Eighty-five. Only defeated. By table topping Conan Whitehead. 40. And even there, he averaged 91.68 in that particular match. Real good quality affair. And beating a man who could well be a rival at the top of the table in 60. German Fag 4 3 in his second game of the session. That was as we joined you on. Sporty Stuff TV. Jeremy Fag missing a couple of darts at double 15 to get over the line in that particular duel. 100. First max. 140. Just a third 140 of the tie. For Bradley Rose, and he looks set now to open up a 2 0 lead upon Trina Gulliver. 40. Bradley require 121. 1 2 1. When the bullseye woo with Gulliver back on 2 7 3 and stays on the bullseye, finds the bullseye this time. 81. And will leave himself on tops upon his return. 100. Bradley require 40. 17 darts in, in leg one. Bradley Rose. 16 dart hold. Leg two. Giving. Trina. Third leg is Trina to throw first. Game I'm way on. into this match at the moment. One hundred and fourteen. Gonna have to do a bit more of that. 
Or two treble visits. It's for cover because that first dart dragged real low. 96. And this is the middle match of the session at the end of game nine. Every player would have played three games in the session. Be six more matches after that between now and just before six o'clock this evening. It's 2 0 down, but in terms of the scoring and ton plus visits, it's six apiece. 45. Go back 140s, of course, in this particular leg. Forty-five. You know, seen a lot of Trina at the World Seniors events this year. Played at the Champion of Champions, lost to Martin Adams. But to be honest, it the game one hundred is not going to be remembered as much as the aftermath because after that, Trina Gulliver was presented with the BDO Women's World Championship trophy, which went up for 60. auction a couple of months ago. And one of the world senior sponsors decided to buy the trophy and put it in the possession of the Golden Girl, who, 90. after winning it 10 times, rightly deserves the honour of that possession being in her belonging. Is this leg going to be in her possession? 92. Bradley require 170. He's done it before. Could he do it again? Is Lightning going to strike twice on the fish? 145. It wasn't far away, you Trini know. required 24. It's a beautifully thrown dart that was just, just north of the target. 95. Game shot in the third leg. Trina Gulliver. Good leg from Trina. Make her feel like she's in the match now. Fourth leg to, is Bradley to, to build play first. From that. Game on. A foundation on which to grow. It sounds like a school report. 180. Oh, that was A+. Plus. Forty-one. Eighty. Good recovery of the last start following the bounce out. Averaging ninety six and a half now, Bradley. Two out of six when it comes to the doubles. Been a really fifty seven impressive performance so far, and I like a lot about the way he's gone about today. It strikes to me a lot of maturity. Yeah, I mean he could have sixty. Like I say, it's that half glass full mentality and he's he's come in with a positive mindset the first 16. in the building today in practicing and going through all of his routines in preparation for the action 59 now Bradley 6 at least from one, two, two to make it three, one. 59. Bradley, you require 122. So again, after 12 darts. And for the balls I first, finds a single three. 62 less, so we'll head along to the tens. 70. And should get a couple of darts. Well, it depends whether he wants double 16 or double top upon his return. 95. Yeah, what does Bradley he fancy? 52. Double 16 is his choice. Game shot in the fourth leg. Bradley Rose. The right choice. It's a break of throw. And a 3 1 lead. Fifth leg Has is Trina to throw first. To serve Come it on. out. Averaging 90. Three out of eight on the doubles. Four 140s, one 180. Very nearly 
137. Hit the ball for his second 170 of the week. Second max. Second max. And the second time, he started a leg with a max. Fifty-nine. One hundred. Good fine with the last dart. Trina needs a big visit here. Otherwise, she's going to see her hopes in this game begin to evaporate. One hundred and forty. Good response. Doesn't leave her on a finish, and so Bradley does have six on two two one. One hundred. Well, both players having a a very strong leg. Fifty-five. Only fifty-five. So one, two, Bradley one. Bradley require one hundred and twenty-one. Wrap up a four-one win that will see him go into second place. The bullseye for Bradley. Ninety-six. Once again, he scares it on Trina the twenty-five, and so Trina Gulliver needs this one ten to save the match. Ninety left. And across for treble eighteen. So Bradley Rose back for twenty-five. To get 42. the job done and to pick up Bradley the second 25. victory, which would put him into second place in the group behind the all-conquering Conan Whitehead. Double eight to get the job done and to cap off a real impressive Nine. performance. Not to be this time. Trini requires 68. Reasonably efficient on the doubling. Trina... Double 16 to keep it alive. 36. Is that Bradley the one and only chance 16. she's going to get to stay in this match as Bradley Rose returns to a double eight? Game. To sure. seal victory. And a match, a second win, which puts him into second place in the group behind Conan Whitehead. The all conquering Conan Whitehead at the top of it. Bradley Rose gets the better of Trina Gulliver by four legs to one. An impressive display. An average just under 91. A couple of maximums. Four out of 12 when it came to the doubling. And after the break, it is Marvin Van Velzen up against Conan Whitehead. It's the final straight. Your horse is challenging for the lead. Victory is so close, you can taste it. This magnificent animal giving everything for his jockey. And in the last stride, your horse is beaten. Fortunately, with Coral, you'll get a free bet up to £10 if your horse finishes within a length of the winner. Available every day of the season. Coral. Marvin Van Velzen and Conan Whitehead return to the stage for our 10th match of the day. And at the moment, Whitehead is making pretty light work of Group C, isn't he? You feel that Van Velzen is going to need to put at least 10 points on his average to trouble the Barbarian in this one. To see whether he can do just that, let's get back to Mace and Henry. Thank you very much, Abby. That's how the table lies. And it's that man who is sat at the top of it, Conan Whitehead. And he's been pushed in a couple of games, but... He's looked so comfortable, averaging in excess of 90 in every single one of his games so far. He's setting the standard of anyone that we've seen 
so far this week at the Live Lounge in Portsmouth. And he takes on Marvin Van Velzen, who has found the going tough today. It has to be said, the 22-year-old from the Netherlands, a ADC European qualifier, nicknamed the Terminator, will be hoping to terminate the Barbarians. Perfect start to proceedings here at the Super Series. But he's going to have to put in a performance in excess of what we've seen from him so first far today if he's going to first, accrue a couple anymore. of points. Yeah, if he's found it tough going, oh, this is the tougher task of them all today. 85. Trying to dislodge the run of form. Really 80. Well, he's, he's not near the top of his game, but this is this is where his sort of B game sits for me. Around the well, everything's been in excess of ninety-one. His his lowest average of the session today was last time out ninety-one forty-two. Prior to that, it was a ninety-four eighty-two. One hundred and eighty. And his opening game of the day was a ninety-one fifty-nine, and he's popped in yet another max by my reckoning. 77. That's his eighth of the session. His power scoring up there with the best of them. 131. In terms of players' championship action of the weekend, his averages so far is actually in excess of what he 60. showcased there. We'll talk Bringing about that a little bit more in the next leg because he needs 110 here to break the Van Vels and throw in the opener and he's going to get one dart in his hand a double 16 to do exactly that that would have been for a 12 dart to start yeah the players champs he said he was he was catching up with ross smith that he's great pal he had not seen for a while and completely lost 57. track of time and didn't realize he was on first 16. said he just never Settled into the Getting game, and he's the first leg. settled into leg. this one. Rather sharpish. That's a 15-dart breaker throw with a max. 1-0. Yeah, his form in those Players' Championship events. Lost in the first Second round to Dirk Van Dijk and Boda. An off-colour performance for him. 6-1 defeat. Then the next day, Drew Mitzer Suljevic on the streaming lane. Beat him 6-3 with an average of 85.75. And then... In the next round, came up against a man well in form at the minute in Damon Hetter. Lost out 6-2 with an average of 83 and a half. So actually what he's putting in now is in excess of what we've seen from him on the Pro Tour over the course of those two days 60. over in Leicester. Went into that by winning Challenge Tour 14. He actually beat 38. Jeremy Fagg en route in the quarterfinals 5-3. And he kind of went through a who's who in terms of the Super Series on that given challenge tour. Last 32, beat Jared Cole by five legs to three. Last 16, Dom Taylor 5-1. Jeremy, as you mentioned, in the quarterfinal. Harry Ward 5-2. And in the final, beating Willie Ballen by the same scoreline. 56. Fifty-five. Can only require one hundred and fourteen for two nil. Tops. Seventy-four. Just over the bar. That would have been for back-to-back fifteens -back for Conan Whitehead. Fifty-five. Can only require forty. Just looks so comfortable. So at home on a stage, which is. Given him so many good leg. memories Conan in the past and in the present, he's playing just as well. 2 0, he leads Marvin Van Velzen, Third an average of 93 94. And that's despite five missed darts of double in the opening couple of legs. Looking at a slightly bigger sample this year from 131 from Conan on the Challenge Tour, averages back in. The end of January, 94, 97, 90.54. Then had a little bit of a dip in form. 95. But 
He's certainly more often than not playing at around this kind of level. 25. Has produced a high this season of 97. 140. That was in that final against Willie Borland. We've seen him hit 140. Much, much higher averages, of course. Marvin, you require 135. Here at the Super Series. Well, he's got the joint venue record, hasn't he, of 115.62. One of three players have got that average. Cotter Heenahan and Cam Crabtree being the other two. That sort of tells you where his, 56. his ceiling is at. Marvin, you require 94. He actually won in qualification for Series 1 Champions League the week where Conor Heenahan did go berserk, hit that 9 at the back-to-back -back 107 and 115 averages. 31. Conor had to play some good darts 40. that week because that was a really strong lineup, And he's playing some really strong darts here. Tops Same of 3-0 lead. Egg. A 98.02 average. Scarily, he's getting better. 14 dart break there. Fourth leg is Conan to throw first. Game on. That's the double break of throw. He's just starting to go through the gears. 120. Conan, the kind of player, of course, that will. And when you when you look at his runs in tournaments, he does steadily get better and better. This kind of environment suits his style of play. 140. He can almost play himself into top gear. 140. He's playing like a man who just looks destined to go far on Saturday night. 134. This is the best we've seen from anyone so far this week. 140. Average ticks above 104 now. Van Velsen hasn't even had a dart at double in this match, and he may be dispatched very shortly. Well, we've seen Duff hover around this number, didn't we? Conan, you require 96. And it just dropped below the turn in the final leg of the match. Ooh, 42. That was a little lazy. Marvin, you require 92. Decided to attack. Then go double-double. 52. Conan, so, you require 54. To win 4-0 and to cap off. An incredible performance. Conan Whitehead wants tops. And now double 10. 44. Van Velsen's going to get a go at a double at long last. Marvin, you require 40. This is his first start at a double. 30. Well, we haven't seen Conan, a 4-0 scoreline yet. No but that's score. another sloppy dart from Whitehead. And for all the brilliance in leaving him in a position to win the match, whilst trying to cross the line, we've just seen one or two hesitant darts. And it opens Game up the door the for Marvin, Marvin Van, Velsen Van Velsen to pull a leg back and to bring it back to 3-1. He's going to have the darts in the fifth leg here to bring the deficit back fifth to 1. Leg is Marvin to throw first. Game on. I was already filling out my stats for him. Mike was down. 93. What will the response be? 81. 96. And could it has to go to Van Velsen for sticking with the task there because it could have been so easily amidst the Whitehead onslaught for the head to drop and maybe the towel to be waved. Yep, the raising of the white flag. 58. 128. be waving the white flag but you may see the red panic sirens in front of him 48 
And what was it Billy Ocean said? Red light spells danger. 45. I can't find the red bit. Forty-two, Conan, you require one hundred and forty-seven. One four-seven and frame to win the game, but it's not going to go for Co. Ninety-seven, Marvin, you require one hundred and sixty-four. Needed the two trouble nineteens to get a dart at the ball. So for Conan to make it four out of four Conan and go on to eight 50. points. <laughs> Forty-two. Marvin, you require one hundred and seventeen. Will he pay the price? Ninety-seven. Conan, you require eight. Game. Shot. For the match, the match for the Conan win, Whitehead. and that is now four from four for Conan Whitehead as he continues his assault upon this Group C. It's another average 90 and in excess to get the better of Marvin Van Velzen by four legs to one. Conan Whitehead then continuing his winning one here at the Super Series. Next up is Rose against Hunt. Meet Rob's Grand Mary. She loves nothing more than a day at the seaside. And an ice cream. And Rob, well, he wouldn't miss it for the world. By taking time outs on his account, he's making time for moments that really matter. Winner. Setting it up is simple. Choose from days to weeks at a time, or customize it. When you play, play safe at Bet365. Bradley Roos and Adam Hunt go head-to-head -head for the fourth time this week. Hunt currently leads the head-to-head 2-1, -head but it was Roos who came out on top yesterday and is consistently playing at a higher level today. Can he move on to six points with another win here? Let's find out with Chris Mason and Henry Deacon. Thank you very much, Abby. So we now enter 11th game of the session here at the Live Lounge in Portsmouth. Session one of two today. Double day Thursday. Bradley Rose in action up against Adam Hunt next. Now, Bradley's improved, hasn't he, today? And we wondered what we were going to see from him on Thursday at the Live Lounge. But what we have seen, I think we can be quite impressed by. 290 averages, the other one an 82. Ironically, one of the games that he did win, and that was in defiance of a 90 and a half average from Jeremy Fagg. Yeah, it was, it was one of those. He was just sort of sticking in, and there was that one... Long leg in the match, which... First leg is Bradley to throw first. Game on. Of course, always massively affects the average, but the highlight in there, of course, was that beautiful... 81. One, two, five finish to get it done. But, yeah, been, in, been impressed with him. Adam, been a bit hit and miss, hasn't he? Started off 18. brightly. 91.46, 3.180s, despite missing 14 at a double, that 91.46. That shows you how good he was in the scoring phase. 80. Then lost with a 92.33, so an improved average. 
And then, a bit like Bradley, then just sort of fell off the top. Lost to Marvin 4-3 with a, 59. an 82 after missing 17 at a double. And that's the only reason he was defeated in that one. 97. Reminder, if you are on social media, you can get in touch with us at MSS Darts. Our admins will send their tweets and your observations over to the commentary box. And we'll discuss all things Premier League, of course, as well. By the time we go on air, we will most likely know who the champion is going to be. Yeah, certainly would have thought so. It's usually a fairly rapid evening, isn't it? Starts at 7. Two semi-finals and the final. Bradley Require, 158. 96. First to eight. Adam Require, 134. First to 10 in the semis, first to 11 final. Nice. Bit of long course starts for the players. Always prefer playing the longer formats, of course. Bradley requires 62. 62. Peruse. They're going to be a rusing of the soul. There the it is. Leg. Double Bradley 16. Rose. Found for 17 dart to start. Yeah, you can retrieve it from the board, Bradley. Do you want a dart to Second caddy? leg is Adam to throw first. Game on. We've all been there, haven't we? Yeah, it's always with players new to the game. They throw and sort of stand there. And if, if you're going to get well, them out for them. 135. Yeah, Justin Bradshaw does enough. He doesn't need to retrieve darts. We've actually found our, our two 100. local pubs that we're going to take the Super Series team in. Doing a bit of fundraising locally. I think we're going to the Stag and the Mermaid of the first two. So if you do have a pub with a darts team in local to us here on London, London Road, get in touch. We're going to bring the team in, do a bit of filming, have a bit of fun, 81. and raise a few quid. And if you're in and around the Portsmouth area, get your friends, get your family involved with the Super Series by scanning that QR code and joining 100. us on Saturday nights because it, it, it really is a unique darting experience. And we speak to a lot of people, don't we, mates, following the Saturday night sessions, and they all pretty much say the same 100. thing. 100. It's a good night out. Uh. It's a, a tenner for three pints and two pound to book your ticket. If you can find me a 54. night of entertainment for 12 quid, let me know and I'll come. To put it in comparison, I went to an establishment the other day and paid £6.45 for a pint of Tutti Frutti. 100. World-class sport. Nicely priced beverages. 95. You can't beat it. Bradley require 120. Time to climb the ladder. Not to be this time. And so 70. 60. The hunt for one apiece. Adam, you require 70. Double 18 for double eight. 54. I just wonder the way that first dart sat up. Bradley requires a bit of a hindrance to him, I wonder. Game no such on woes the for Rose Bradley on the doubles. Rose. Two from two. Back to back. 17 dart legs. An average of 88-41 in the early Bradley stages. First. Game None on. from two on the doubles for Adam Hunt. And suddenly here we could see a bit of a chasm begin to develop between the players because a win here would put Bradley on six points. The rest of the field would then be on two. Although Jeremy takes on Trina next, the winner of that one would move on to four. So we could 43. see some gaps begin to develop here in Group C. Well, the table could really start to, to take shape. 134. Sad news of the Passing of Tina Turner. At the moment, it's Conan Whitehead that's simply the best. 
93. Four out of four, unbeaten. This final match will be our penultimate 14. match of the session. Still got four more to bring you at the completion of this one. One hundred and forty. Question is, who's going to be the proud Mary on Saturday night? One hundred and thirty-four. You know, I was at a show last night and I only got reception outside the 140. venue. One hundred and forty. Saw that news pop up on Bradley my phone. Yeah, very sad news. Very sad news. What show were you at last night? A family show. Ninety-six. What kind of family show. Adam, you require eighty-five. <laughs> Don't seem to want to divulge the information. That's dodgy ground with me, pal. Thirty-three. I'll, I'll waterboard you in a minute. Some people are saying Bradley yes, please. Forty. Let's see if this double goes first. He's been two out of two on the outer ring. Game Make that three out of there. three, Bradley, Bradley Rose, Rose for. Three no lead. Was it like comedy? Was it, it theatre or bit of theatre? Bit of theatre. Game on. Why doesn't that surprise me? I used to be a thespian back in the day. One hundred and forty. That speech impediment. I'd be a little bit careful about that. Eighty-four. I once played Smee in Peter Pan in one of the main theatre in, in the city of Portsmouth. Did you really? 100. Wow. Got the hook. 59. Is that a thespian thing? 100. I don't know how we've got here. Adam Hunt will be wondering how he's got into this position, averaging just under 95. Yeah, he finds himself. 3 0 down. And in a world of trouble. 140. Adam, you require 81. Trouble. Oh, he was going to go double 19. Tidies up. Only after 12, we need some more of that, especially in the next leg when it will be Bradley's throw. 60. Adam, you require 20. He's already 20. had a couple of darts of double in this match. Game shot in the but fourth leg. he needs leg. the one Adam time Hunt. of trying here to bring it back to 3-1, but it is Bradley Rose who has the darts to seal a 4-1 success here. Fifth leg is Bradley to throw first. Game on. In a quality game. The standard has been night and day from that of Group 134. A. Well, as is the performance of Bradley, in fairness, especially the added consistency. 92. 92 for a month. That's exactly what he's averaging. And it may not be enough. 100. Well, he needs a couple of trebles minimum. Gets a couple of trebles, but can he fill it up? One yes, it's the emphatic answer. It's his second max of the match. In consecutive legs. He's on a bit of a charge. Is he making that major move in the match? 57. Bradley's not really moved away or deviated from that 90 average, but Adam Hunt is continuing to improve. 140. It's mid-match move time, potentially. 4. 138. Is that the setup that helps Adam Bradley upon the path 89. to victory? 57-32. Oh, tops, tops. 49. So, 72. Bradley requires 72. Bradley Rose to make it six points 
from his day so far. It's going to be two in his hand, Game. a double Shot. 12. And a match Silly 4 1 victory and an impressive performance as well. 92.6 for average and four out of four when it comes to the doubles. And you could see in that little Valisa celebration there how much that meant to him. He has shown a lot of maturity today, has shown a lot of composure and a lot of mental strength and has played some fantastic darts as well. As for Adam, 96 average and 33% on the doubles isn't enough. That's been the standard we've seen today. Next up, Jeremy Fagg against Trina Gulliver. Catch the best thoroughbred racing from South Africa alongside 15 live Greyhound races at 11 o'clock every Tuesday, Thursday and Friday morning live here on Sporty Stuff TV. Next up then, two players searching for their second victories of the day. Trina Gulliver struggled to carve out opportunities at the back end of legs in her last match. Fag prevented from getting opportunities by the brilliance of White Dead in his last match. Let's hand back you back to the chaps in comms to guide you through all the action. Thank you very much, Abby. Well, we are seeing some real impressive darts, aren't we? It really is coming up to the boil in Group C. And, well, what we're going to see... From these two, well, Jeremy Fagg lost out last time out to Conan Whitehead by four legs to two. That was Conan again doing what he does best. As for Trina Gulliver, well, we saw her in game nine, losing out 4-1 to Bradley Rose. Both players picking up one victory for their efforts so far. The winner of this game will move into third spot in what is becoming a little bit of a uniform table. They'll be on four points behind Bradley Rose on six and... Conan Whitehead on eight going into the final round of fixtures. And this feels like a must-win game for Trina Gulliver when you consider the fact that her last game is against first Conan game, Whitehead, who has, at on. the minute, decimated the competition. Yeah, he's been a, a different class so far today. Been playing well within himself. And One I was impressed with this man last time out. Was defeated, but it was a decent enough performance against Conan. 99. Kicks off with the max. And it's going on. And on. And 177. on. 177. Yeah, why don't you just get it out of the way with Jeremy? Why not? Only Conor Heenahan has Jeremy achieved this feat at the live lounge in Portsmouth. Another one of them. For double 12. 130. And Jeremy Fagg also almost added his name to the Roll of Honour and the Super Series 9 Dark Club. What a moment that would have been. So, so unlucky. 100. Jeremy requires He's willing 12. it in. Here in the comms box. No score. Although those misses matter too much because Trina's back 
in the 200s. 60. Jeremy Rupert, I not often 12. do you see a 13 darter where a player's missed four darts at double. <laughs> No score. He's bust score. Said that to Richard Vengster once. He when he missed that double twelve for the nine darter at Lakeside. He hit it next next dart. Not often do you hit Jeremy a ten dart and miss 12. a dart at double. I don't think he was best pleased. I think he's going to be best pleased here unless Game he, shot in the first he does leg. eventually. Jeremy Fag. Oh, in the double, what could have been a nine ended up. A 17 darter. Second leg is Trina to throw first. Game on. Eight darts at a double. So he missed more darts at double as he had perfect in that leg. 57. Correct. Darts is such a weird sport at times. Ninety. Incredibly, because Connie Hina has the only player to hit a nine darter, if Jeremy hit that, then it would have meant that no English player would have hit a nine data at the Super Series in its current guise. 66. James Richardson was the first to do it in the live league. Yeah, the one in Southampton. was you on the stick, wasn't it? 180. It was. Have you done one yet? I've done two. 16. So I did Graham Usher's at the Champion of Champions and I did Hands first. Good, isn't it? It's a bit fun, isn't it? 83. That was Trina's first max of the day. Will that convert into a 135 leg winning opportunity? As you feel, this may have to go. There's the 60. There's the 15. 75. Mrs. Tops. Jeremy requires 70. For a 2 0 lead. It's going to be two in his hand, a double eight. And now fours. 66. Well, you can't fault him scoring-wise, but when it's come Trina to the doubles 40. in the space of the first two legs, he's already missed nine at the outer ring. Yeah, double trouble. Oh, the big man from Australia. Game shot in the second leg. No such Trina wounds for the golden down. girl. 18 dart hold of throw. Third leg is Jeremy to throw first. Game on. One hundred and eight. Well, the first time was so nice. Maybe he's going to try the nine data twice. Sixty. That was the twenty eighth one eighty of the session. Well, for a minute, you might have to check your notes. Mm. 100. He's missed nine darts at double in two legs, Jeremy Fagg, and his average is still in excess of a ton. 140. He's had the two 180s, a 177, a 140. 140. Three scores between a ton and one three five. Down to eighty one after nine in this one. Eighty. Jeremy required. Well, he couldn't 81. oblige with a nine, but is he gonna find a potential eleven? He's got six, so fifteen will do from his perspective. Forty nine. Leave himself on thirty two after twelve for a two one lead. Eighty-one. 
Jeremy require 32. That's awkward. Has to move all the way across. Can he find a no way score. through? That was unlucky. Trina, you require 140. Well, this would hurt. Mightily hurt. Couldn't follow. 180. A, a double 10, Jeremy, you require 32. Needs yourself a double just in case. Game shot in the third leg. Jeremy Fagg. The opportunity Fag. isn't going to arise, and Jeremy Fagg opens up a 2-1 lead over Trina Gulliver. 16 dart leg. Fourth leg is Trina to throw first. Polished performance Come in on. the scoring stakes, but still some work to do when it comes to the doubles. There's missed a handful of darts in every single leg in this game so far. That's a second max for the Golden Girl. Trina currently averaging 90. 96. Big scoring game. All maxes. 177. Fifty-eight. Eighty-two. Katrina first to the finish. It's been a little bit of an off leg this for Jeremy. Eighty-three. So it's six on one five eight to level this game back up. Trouble nineteen to leave double eighteen. Perfect. One hundred and twenty two. He's got a game on his hands here. Started so brightly. Missing double twelve for the nine. One hundred. Trina, you require thirty six. Trainers, double eighteen away from two two. Levels your devils. No score. Jeremy, you're well, this would be devilish from Jeremy if he finds this one six four. Another bullseye. Oh, one hundred and seventeen. For a second, it looked like it was going. Trainer, you require thirty six. And so Gulliver returns to two apiece. Double nine. Game shot on the fourth leg. Trina Gulliver. Two two. We've got a contest on our hands now. Fifth leg is Jeremy to throw first. Game on. And Jeremy, who dominated the scoring stakes in the first couple of legs, has missed thirteen darts. Easy one. A double in the game has been royally punished by darting royalty in Trina Gulliver. 25. Well, Fallon is the queen of the palace. 96. Trina was queen of the lakeside, that's for sure. Seven consecutive years, she owned that stage. 40. Ten times in total, a winner of the Women's World Championships. One hundred. Fifty-nine. What a time this would be for a third max. One time to perfection. 
And even so, from 44 after 12. To take a 3-2 lead against Gulliver. 46. Jeremy require 44. Will he go loco in El Capoco? No, he goes 12 double 16. That's the... Game shot on the fifth leg. That's the B-roll album. Fag. But it's a 3-2 lead for Jeremy Fagg against Trina Gulliver. He's had the opportunities to get the game won. 14 darts are there. To throw first. And he's a leg game away on. from sealing the deal. Yeah, real strong leg. 60. Leg five for Jeremy. You know, went off the boil a bit there. Ninety-six. One hundred and eighty. That's a sixth max of this match. Three apiece in those particular stakes. 57. Could be a seventh. Oh, so apparently that preempting also works in the middle legs that aren't nines. <laughs> Working for Trina here. Fifty six to one six one after Trini nine. Trina one hundred and sixty one. And all the pressure of a flat tire on this one six one. She's got time on her side. Ninety five. Perhaps fitting, we go all the way. Jeremy Fag started this leg. Uh, started this 96. game, should I say? With eight Trini perfect darts. 66. But it's been a battle of toil and trouble on the doubles. And Gulliver herself, with her own brand of scoring power, may be sending us to a decider. Double 16 to do just that. And Trini nails it. 15 darts from Trina. Six legs played. Six holds of throw. Six 180s. Seventh and final leg is Jeremy to throw first. Game on. But the question in leg seven is who's going to pick up the points? 90. And is that old adage, scores for show, doubles for dough. But this might be an almighty time to find another big score. 85. She would have expected more following that first dart. Well, set up. Begging for a bedfellow. 100. Fifty six. Fifty eight. Going just deserting her there. And a little bit cagey, isn't it? You can sense the one hundred, the nerves. Twenty-two scores make that twenty-three scores of a ton or more between 140. them. One hundred and forty. Jeremy, so much so that Justin Bradshaw's voice can't cope to win the game with some fanfare, with some style. The one five five isn't going to go. Ninety-nine. But is Gulliver going to get the one three five? Got to go ball. 110 remaining, and that's not a bad guide. But Jeremy's going to get, well, should 50. get two darts to get it Jeremy done. Jeremy require 56. Well, this has been 
a real treat of a game to watch. And Jeremy Fagg has two darts at tops. And now double ten to claim the point from him, but he can't. And so Gulliver's going to get hurt one, go to get the game one. At worst, it should be a dart of the ball. All the match. 45 for tops. Single 15. Single 20 leaves ball. Make sure of the 20. She does just that. Bullseye for Gulliver. It was 60. almost a golden dart for the golden girl. Jeremy required 20. But the bullseye evaded. And the double game. 10 found sure. for Jeremy Fagg, who Jeremy wins Fag. an absolute corker of a game against Trina Gulliver by four legs to three. A game which saw six maximums in there. Jeremy Fagg missing double 12 for the nine dart finish in the opening leg of it. He gets over the line in the final leg against Trina Gulliver. A victory by four legs to three. It's Bradley Rose up against Marvin Van Vels and it's an all Dutch affair after this short break. Final straight. Your horse is challenging for the lead. The victory is so close you can taste it. This magnificent animal giving everything for his jockey. And in the last strides, your horse is beaten. Fortunately, with Coral, you'll get a free bet up to £10 if your horse finishes within a length of the winner. Available every day of the season. Coral. Then into our final round of fixtures we go. Bradley Roos and Marvin Van Velzen go head to head for the fourth time this week. Van Velzen winning two of the three meetings, but Roos has been a different player to the one we saw in Group A. If he can move on to eight points with a win here, he will be very handily placed to qualify for finals night. To talk you through it, let's return to Mace and Henry. Thanks, Abby. Yeah, big game for Bradley and Marvin. Starving for a win. Yet to win a match since his opening game yesterday. He is right up against it. As Abby mentioned, Bradley seems a completely different player today. He's won three of his four matches. His only defeat at the hands of table topping Conan Whitehead. Oh, well, here we go. Bradley, it's Bradley with the honour. This Game is on. our final cycle of games. Three more matches to bring you. I've been enjoying Tom Tungsten. We've been bringing you today on Sporty Stuff TV. An ultimate match to follow. Trina against Conan. And then Adam Hunt against Jeremy Fagg. One hundred and forty. Eighty five. One hundred. Just seemed to be a lot more positive today, hasn't it? Bradley. 
85. Twinkle in his eye. We'll say on debut, it takes a takes a good few days just to 80. settle into everything. Get used to the environment. Get used to the 95. Multiple matches on one day. Bradley require Mentally, 137. Getting yourself in that zone that losing a match is just that. Just lost a match. 59. I think as well, he's put in a group Marvin, play where there's a lot of debutants. So a lot of people going through those same emotions where as you look at the group C that he's been placed in, it's a group C full of experienced 59. campaigners in this yeah, and you competition. Sort of, Bradley you, you requires can find just Everybody was, was getting sort of dragged down to that level until Neil Duff made a, a run for the line. Game shot on the first leg, Bradley Roos. It's one area of his game that's certainly improved today. Second leg is Marvin to throw first, game on. One hundred and thirty-five. Fifty-five. Fifty. Sixty-eight. Seventy. As we approach the final round of fixtures for this session, don't forget we've got another session tonight, ten o'clock. And well, we're looking forward to this group B, aren't we, Mace? Because we think something quite good could happen. We've got some players who know about this format: Johnny Haynes, Champions Week Series Two, Matt Denon has played some great stuff here. One hundred and twenty. Andy Jenkins is just a legend of the Super Series. Yeah, so it's 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 a nice little lineup, isn't it? It's a good mix. Fifty nine. The open with Marvin Andy Rupert Jenkins against Nile Collison. That will be our first match of the session this evening. Ninety. That's followed by Matthew Dennant against debutant Stuart White. 96. And Johnny Haynes against Jenks. Marvin, you require 36. Game shot in the second leg. Marvin Van Veltsen. Ready enough reply. Yeah, so Third the five players Bradley involved to tonight. First. Andy Jenkins, Game Noel on. Cullerton, Matthew Dennant, Stuart White and Johnny Haynes. Pretty much know what you're going to get from Johnny Haynes. Good. Good stuff. Quick stuff as well. You, you quite like him as a, a bit of an outsider, don't you, for the week? I think if I was Johnny Haynes and I look at his odds at eight to one, I'd feel like compared to the other players on that list and what he's achieved in this competition, he could feel a little bit shortchanged by it. I think eight to one for a player who's won here, did well at Champions Week, came close to qualifying again for Champions Week, has qualified for. World Championships in both codes. I, I think there's 33. some possible value there. Look, Neil Duff has been there, done it. Of course he has. Matt Dennett, Conan Whitehead, a former champion here. They're good players, but we always like to find players that just... Might go under the radar. Down. Yeah. 59. And we're both big fans. Yeah, he's, he's one of them that can be a little bit underrated. A handful for anybody when he's on his game. 44. As is Matt Dennant, of course. 54. And we like about Johnny as well. He's always honest, isn't he? Always honest. 100. Well, this match so far. Going with throw. 90. Bradley require 102. This would be rusing. 
Double 16. 70. Ninety-five. Bradley required thirty-two. Game shot in the third leg. Bradley Double Roos. sixteen for sixteen to lead two one. Fourth leg is Marvin to throw first. Game on. One hundred and thirty-five. Twenty seven. Eighty five. Oh, we're going to have uh, another leg on the throw. Eighty five. That way in the early stages of leg four. Could this be a Toto match? Hold the line. <laughs> 85. The dance isn't always on time. Well, it's strange. You've got Marvin, who is yet to hit. 99. 40 or more in this contest so far. He finds himself a couple of visits away from 2-2. Two -two. 90. Well, the main reason for that is because we're seeing a fair few strays into that. But in fact, in, in every single visit in this leg, he's had at least one dart that's found either the single or treble five. 100. Marvin, you're still on for the 15. And if he hits a five, he could still be on for 50. Of course he does. 51 bullseye. That would have been brilliant. 70. How often do you see 15 dart legs where every single visit has included a single five or a treble five or something in that segment? 45. Marvin, you require leg. 36. Against the throw. For Bradley. Splits it. 28. Bradley, you require 145. Risky. He's saying you can't take this out, Bradley. On this occasion, he was right. 67. Marvin, you require 8. Two fours for two, two. Four. Not to be. Well, Bradley, you we'll require 78. A little annoyed to still want 78. Fifty-eight. Marvin, you require four. Two twos for two, two. One left. No Not score. Not to be. And Bradley returns to 3 1, wanting double 10. Bradley required 20. 1 left. Not no found. No score. Marvin, Scruffy you require leg. 4. Double two for two two. Game shot goes. on the fourth leg. Marvin Eventually. Van Veltsen. It's one of those legs that they will put to one side. Fifth leg is Bradley and to we'll throw first. Go again for the next leg. One hundred and twenty five. Apologies about the slight loss of scoreboard. We will Update you score by score as the leg goes on. 85. 2-2. Two, two. There you go. About to go into radio commentary mode. 120. Get ready for the match play, won't you, mate? 1-2-1. This was radio. We say one just above the wire. The treble five just grazed on the other side of the wire. Uh, 
That's been one of the real success stories, hasn't it, the last few years, darts on the radio? Yeah, it was something that... 59. took a bit of a gamble on. It was actually... Well, when you were on about the Irish Masters, it was that was on the radio, of course. But the 66. earlier radio broadcast to that was the... Was the um, Taylor Barneveld head to head? I do believe John 16. Gwynn did that on the radio. Pretty sure your your uh, sparring partner Lord Walling did a test match, didn't he, with uh, Nicholson one time? Yeah, forty four. Yeah, Bradley required one hundred and thirty six. Who knew? Seventy-eight. Another leg that is in control. One hundred and eighty. After our first match Bradley of the match, fifty-eight. Okay. Well, you don't see this often. Thirty-six, twenty-two. 36. Every match today Marvin, you require has had at least one 180 in it. We've seen the scoring on show. Game shot. Wow, well, there was a Marvin bit of a G up Velsen. there, wasn't there, for Marvin Van Velzen? I think he enjoyed that. Well, backs the 180 up with the 86 out. Big moment in the match. Six leg is Marvin to throw first. And our first Game break on. of throw. And you know what? Maybe just needed to let out a bit of that pent-up emotions because it has been, at times, a bit of a trying day for Marvin. 59. Maybe just to let out a little bit of that tension may just help him. Well, until that win, 4-3 over... 41. Adam Hunt a little earlier. He was on, a, on an eight-match run. Without a win. The last win prior to that was first game yesterday, wasn't it? 28. Against Bradley. That's how Warwick Darts that, is. That'll be 3 1 in the head to head, but he started this leg poorly. Six starts thrown. 87 16. points scored. Forty-four. One hundred and four. And the aggression is tagging along now with Bradley Ruse. Sixty. Sixty-five. Forty-nine. I guess what we could be left with again, Mace, the possibility of a last leg decider. Shock horror. One hundred. It's been that sort of day. It's been that sort of group. Conan Whitehead has been the dominant force, but really below him, it's been 45. an even kilter between everyone. Bradley required 95. Fifty-three. There he was. A loose one. He was going for a 16 for tops. I ended up in double 99. Seven. Bradley have to burn a dart here. To get two at a double. Now is it... Is it double 10 to leave double 11? Go your own way, pal. Game shot well, on the sick flag. Bradley Bruce. said and done, it's another chalk on the board. 
and predictably we go to a decider. Seventh and final leg, it's Bradley to throw first, game on. Yeah, it's been that kind of day today. It's been that kind of week really, hasn't it? Where not really much has separated the field. Well, half of our matches now today have gone all the 29. way. 29. I just got a little bit of uh, news. The, uh, the Hampshire team 95. has been announced for next week in the county championship game against Cornwall. Some recognisable names in there. Chaz Barstow, Luke Getty, Adam Lipscomb, Aaron Monk, 59. Richard North, Scott that Walters. and Super Series lineup, isn't it? Justin Bradshaw, our referee in the A. Wow. 38. They must be short. Yes, but times and that. One hundred and thirty four. Multi talented Justin Bradshaw. Also part of our sporting team here at the Super Series. Seventy-six. One hundred and forty. So Van Vels at eighty-eight points away from sealing the deal here for four free success. One hundred and thirty-three. Marvin, you require eighty-eight. And to join. Jeremy on four points. Ball. The middle of the diddle does not 43. solve the riddle. Bradley requires 70. 16 ball. Wow. 66. He's Marvin gone chasing, and if he returns, leaves double two. And so Van Velzen was 45 to finish with a win. That would put him on to four points. Two at tops. Game shot. And Marvin Van, Marvin Van Velzen Van is Velsen. victorious in his final game of the day. A 4-3 victor, and you can see the outtake of elation, the outtake of emotion as he secures that success. 4-3 the victor in the end, 74 and a half average, 4 out of 17 on the doubles. And so next up, it is Conan White looking to complete the card up against Trina Gulliver next. Hey, I'm Gary Ashburn, and I've been working in the world of collectibles and memorabilia for over 30 years. I'd love you to join me every Sunday night at 10pm for Collectibles Guru, where we showcase awesome items from the world of sport, music, TV and film. You'll hear the stories behind the genuine signatures and get a front row seat into the world of sport and showbiz. So tune in every Sunday night at 10pm, only here on Sporty Stuff TV.
So then, for the third time this week, Marvin van Velzen has managed to get the better of Bradley Roos. He got that win in a decider 4-3. A real drop-off in terms of quality and level from Roos in that one. But he is still very handily placed going into tomorrow's session. We can have a little look at the league table with two more matches to bring you this afternoon. Conan Whitehead is next to round off his day's play. He takes on Trina Gulliver. Whitehead looking to complete the perfect day and end it on 10 points. At the moment, you can't see him deviating away from the level that he has shown over the course of today's play. So let's find out whether he can get that fifth victory in this one and hand back to our commentary team. Thank you very much, Abby. So can Conan Whitehead complete the card on day one here in Group C? He takes on Trina Gulliver, who, as things stand, occupies as we Seen in the lead table, bottom spot, two points, but if she can win here and move on to four, the way the table has congested itself below Whitehead at the top of it, she'll be more than in with a shout. And actually, if she can do the double over Conan, she may well find herself on six points before Bradley Roos plays again. Although she's well, she played very well last time out. Hitting three one eighties in a match that had six in total and a one seven seven from Jeremy. First leg, it's Trina and did to have a first. At Game the on to win it. Only narrowly missed. But the 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 levels in terms of. 26. Averages just can't be ignored in this one. Levels is something that he has been harboring very high all day. 140. I'm really intrigued to see how far that 4 to 1 to win the week comes in after this session because 100. He's put in performance after performance, which. Would justify a favourites tag. I know this is playing the assumption game, but if he wins this one, you'd expect him to do enough on day two to go through. He would pretty much have a foot there, wouldn't he? He'd just then need to complete the job tomorrow. 59. Yeah, he's, he wins this, and he's... But when he comes back tomorrow, he will play Trina in match number two. 43. And then have a bit of a break and then play Bradley. He picks up the two wins there. Job done. Sixty-five. Over the course of the day, Conan Whitehead has not averaged below ninety. His lowest average was ninety point one eight, and that was because he missed eleven darts a double against 100. Marvin Van Belzen. Yeah, that's a that is a great standard. Just to consistently be over 90. Thirty-six. Conan, you require 121. Oh yes, 25 for 36. Game shot in the what first a way leg. to start. Conan it's another ton topper for Conan Whitehead. It's another 15 dart leg for Conan Whitehead to lead Trina Gulliver. By a leg to Second nil. leg is Conan to throw first. Game on. Standard stuff from Conan today. 100. Put it in perspective, his average for the day is around about 91, 92, which is around about the same level for the likes of Keen, Barry, Ryan Meikle, 45. Alan Suter for 12 months, Mensah Sulevich as well. And even Scott Williams, who had such a good year in 2022, his yearly average is just under 91. I know we're talking about bigger sample sizes, but it just gives us a little bit of perspective as to the level that Conan Whitehead is playing at today. Absolutely. 26. May well be saving his best till last, of course. 100. Game 
You can tell how well Conan's playing just by the fact that the treble 20 has been begging for mercy. 97. It's took a bit of a, a bit of a passion today. He was the best board in the business, the Wimore Blade 6 triple court. The board of choice for the Super Series, the board of choice for all the PDC majors. 85, Conan, you require 122. 1-2-2 two, two for 2-0. He has got time. 18 here. 82. He is himself on tops upon his return. 41. Conan, you require 40. For 2 0. Double 10. Just had 13. a little glance at the scoreboard there before he threw that final dart. 13. I'm not sure that he'd be considering not going for double 10, surely. 60. Maybe he was just Conan having a quick peek 10. to see how much time he had. Well, now it could get Six. precarious as he heads down for double two if he comes Trini back. Could Gulliver steal this of a 147? There's five darts a double in this leg, Conan Whitehead. He's going to get more opportunities. 30. Conan, you require four. down. To the southeast part of the board for double two. Game shot in the second leg. Conan Whitehead. Well, gets there in the end. Real long leg for Conan. Matters not. Third leg is Trina to throw first. Game on. Get it done. Make it five out of five. Back to the hotel. Get himself ready 41. for tomorrow. Yep, chill for the evening. And then back up and out. I think this is the the operative prime time. 100. One o'clock starts. It means you could do one or two bits in the morning. Just mill around at your own pace. Get to the venue a couple of hours before. Play your games and then the evening's your own. 80. Just relax. Maybe go out for a nice meal or something like that. And then get yourself ready for the next day. You can nicely plan 100. your day around things in this time slot. Yeah, and it's just more normal for the players to be to be playing. Hence, why we've seen a forty-three an increase in in levels and standard. One hundred. Could well see the classic fifteen leg here from Whitehead. Ton, ton, ton. You two are one after nine. Yeah, turn 137. On the ultimate red pen leg. Not this time. I'll tell you what, may not leave a finish now. Well, we nearly 59. had the ultimate leg, of course, a little earlier. Jeremy Fagg missing double 12 for the nine against Trina in the opening leg of the match. 180, 177, 60, 60. 45. Missed the 24. Conan, you require 142. He's already had one ton topper in this game. He's not going to add another to the collection. 100. Trina, you require 155. A fourth ton, though. Another red pen moment. And if he wins this game, well, he may 97. be closer to the gold pen moment Conan, because that would mean 42. that he'll be through to tomorrow night's final. Double 16 for a 3 0 lead. 26. The cry of Co as that last dart Trina, you require evades 58. the intended target. And so Gulliver should get two darts now at tops to half the devs. It should have been two. It's not even going to be one. Opportunity presented itself and then it's 18. passed by. Conan, you require 16. Two eights to three nil. 
Double four. Twelve. And Gulliver's going to get another chance. Forty. Tens. The move makes it even more difficult. Thirty. Just misses on Conan, the inside wire. Four. Twos for the table topper. Game shot in the third leg. Conan Gets it Watkins. this time. That's the double break of throw. Fourth leg is coming to throw first. Game on. From four nil to move on to ten points plus twelve in the leg difference. This is what a champion does when he sees a finishing line in sight. He makes the dash towards it. And you have to say, really, over the course of the day, apart from game one against Bradley Roos, the rest of the games he's looked quite comfortable in. The 4-2 win against Adam Hunt, he had to get two-ton toppers to even pick up legs in that game. Then against Jeremy Fagg, he was just in control. Missed a few doubles there, but 1-4-2 and then... Against Marvin Van Velde in a 4-1 victory. He was in command. He's been the standout player in this group. 40. And he's on the verge of making it 5 out of 5. And 95. Putting himself, even after day 1's action, on the brink of qualification. The Saturday evening's finale. And he will bring... A fair few fans down. He usually does when he's here on a Saturday evening, Conan Whitehead. Conan, you require yep. 141. Very popular player. He was hasten to mention to me earlier, he has never failed to qualify for a Saturday in Portsmouth. He may finish with a 13. And to Trina Gulliver, it'll be a case of regrouping and going again tomorrow. But for Conan Whitehead, Conan, this is to complete 16. the perfect day. Five from five for Game. the former Shot. champion Conan Whitehead. Conan Whitehead. And he really has set his stall out. Conan Whitehead, the former champion, playing like a champion, beating Trina Gulliver 4-0. Five wins from five for Conan Whitehead. Next up, Adam Hunt, Jeremy Fack. Meet Rob's Grand Mary. She loves nothing more than a day at the seaside. And an ice cream. And Rob? Well, he wouldn't miss it for the world. By taking time outs on his account, he's making time for moments that really matter. Winner. Setting it up is simple. Choose from days to weeks at a time, or customise it. When you play, play safe at Bet365. So Conan Whitehead has put down a marker and made it five wins from five on the opening day of Group C action and already has one foot in finals night. Now time for our final match of the session and it's Adam Hunt taking on Jeremy Fagg. Inconsistency has cost Hunt for much of the day and a win here is huge to prevent himself from getting cut adrift from the lead in pack. An important match and Henry Deacon and Chris Mason will talk you through it. Well, thank you very much, Abby. So the last game of the afternoon session here at the Super Series and it does have... Huge significance in terms of the table, especially for Adam Hunt. He can put himself within two of the top two overnight wise for Jeremy. Well, he can go 
level on points with Bradley Ruse at the top of the table in second place, which is the final qualification position. But which way do you see this one going, Mace? I, I think it could be absolutely anything, this one. that You can, looking over the averages for the day and the performance levels, you can make a case for both, but just slightly siding with Jeremy on this one. Not with a vast amount of confidence, I hasten to add, but gun to my head. First leg is How's Adam it to throw first. Up? Game on. Four to five, Adam. Ten to eleven for Jeremy. Yeah, there you go. It's uh, very much a pick 'em. One hundred. And a little bit of a sit down and rest, and we go back again tonight. Yep, yeah, back on air. Ten p.m. Set your planners. 81. A cup of cocoa ready. It should be fast and furious 134. this evening. Think of it as the darty after party. It's a whole night of darts, isn't it? When we come off air here, it's only a couple of hours until the Premier League 60. finals at the O2. It starts at 7. I'll be done and dusted, and then more darts for you, dart addicts, at 10 o'clock on Sporty Stuff TV. Group B gets underway. Why don't you join us Saturday night? If you've got one of them scanner things on your phone. 59. Or if you're watching via your phone or tablet, whatever, head over to dartshop.tv. Two pound booking fee. Tickets are absolutely free. Doors open on London Road in Portsmouth. Six thirty PM. First start thrown. Around about seven thirty. Final will be at eleven. Forty six. Adam you're Which means you can do whatever you want as well for the rest of the night. Yeah. Game shot in the first leg. Adam Hunt. Some start from Adam. One ten out. Fifteen dart. Hold a throw. Second leg is Jeremy to throw first. Game on. How do you assess his day, Adam Hunt? For him, probably frustrating. He's only had the one win. One hundred. That was his opening match where he played very well at three one eight is missed fourteen darts at a double, but still an average of ninety one forty six in a four one win over fifty nine. Since then he's been winless. I certainly think he's picked 60. his game up from Group A. Remember he was involved in that. 58. That match against Conan, where he averaged 92-33 in a 4-2 defeat. It was 2 out of 3 on the doubles. Took out 1-1-9 one, one, and 1-3-8. One, Wasn't enough. 81. I don't think he recovered from that 4-3 defeat to Marvin, a match that 77. Uh, he was better in all departments, apart from hitting the doubles. And even in his next game against Bradley, a 4-1 defeat, he averaged 96 in that game, but Bradley 4, 4 when it came to the outer ring finishing. But Jeremy hit, improved leg from the first. 60. He's Jeremy himself require 120. On 120 after 12. Ton left. Tops left. Strictly come darting. Moving all 80. round the hockey. Left, right, left. 171. Jeremy require 40. Level this game up. Game Tops shot is found. That's leg. a 16 Jeremy data. Bag. One apiece here in our final game of the day. I remember, this will be the first game of tomorrow. So this is a full pointer between the pair. Third leg is Adam to throw first. Game on. It's just one of those to 97 the seed for the rematch tomorrow afternoon. 
It's almost like one of those European Cup ties played over two legs. 41. Just don't have the same amount of time to right the wrongs. 140. Sixty. Eighty two. Good recovery. Finding the fifty seven on cover. Here comes Jeremy. One hundred and forty. All in, all in all, a good day of darts so far, Henry. 130. Yeah, I've seen some really enjoyable games, some really good stuff, and we think that trend's going to continue going into tonight's session here, the live lounge, which, as I say, remember, it's a 10 o'clock start time here 44. on Sporty Stuff TV Adam, you require on the Moda Super Series YouTube channel. This could be another excellent leg. 15, if he can find the double 16. 20. Not to be, but he is going to come back. Of course, isn't it the start of the Greyhound derby? Indeed, very, very busy few weeks in the Greyhound racing world. 140. It's all on sporty stuff, Adam, you require 32. Double eight. Game shot in the third Two, one. leg. Adam Hunt. 17, data. Everything fairly comfortable with throw so far. Fourth leg is Jeremy to throw first. Game on. Big gap in the averages. We go into the fourth leg. 10 points, 91 for Adam, 81 for this man. 97. 87. Adam Hunt, of course, doesn't 85. need a break of throw. Tomorrow it will be Jeremy who gets the darts. Only time we pull up here at the Super Series is for the final. Even in the semi-finals on Saturday night, it's the winner of the groups that will have the throw in the semi-finals. The runner-up will have to go second. 81. And on Saturday night's final, there is a predetermined set routine as to who plays who and who has the throw against who based upon your league positioning. 135. So, for example, game one will be the winner of Group A up against the second-place player in Group C, and the winner of Group A will have the throw. I've seen enough finals nights now to know. That's the reward. <laughs> 45. One hundred and eighty. Just turning up the heat in leg four. Going to break throw. Could go ball here. No, he's staying up. One hundred. Adam, you require fifty-five. Go three-one lead. Two at tops. Game shot on the fourth leg. Tops Adam found three-one. Fourteen data, and Adam Hunt is on the hill against Jeremy Fag here. Three-one up. In our final game of first. the day here on. in Group C at the Live Lounge. Don't forget, back tonight at 10 o'clock for all the Group B action. 57. Andy Jenkins, Niall Cullerton, Matt Dennett, Stuart White and Johnny Haynes, the five combatants in that group. Three of them will go through. 16. Two from here. Join Neil Duff. In Saturday night's finale, Duffman is going to be here on Saturday night. 7.30 60. start that. Beginning on the Moto Super Series YouTube channel. And then from 10 p.m. we'll be joining Sporty Stuff TV viewers for the semi-finals and final. 137. So someone's going to join Danny Lowby and Reese Robinson in the Champions Week field at the beginning of August. 
60. Forty four, one hundred. Jeremy Fag then for to finish on one four four after twelve. One hundred and forty. One forty. Jeremy Lee's hunt require one hundred and forty. For the score in half, but it's going to be Jeremy. He's going to get first go, and it was a double twelve on the one four four, which he missed for the nine data against Trina Gulliver in his previous match. Ninety six. Adam, you require one hundred and forty. Can he win in style? Not to be this time, but he's going to lay it up handy. But because the darts stand up, he's got to move all the way across and then make sure. Good dart, that. Jeremy require 48. Two at double 16 for the break. Thirty two. Not to be. And so Adam Hunt Adam comes back 40. for tops to claim a 4-1 victory. Which Game. puts sure. him and the match, on four Adam points Hunt. overnight and puts him in third place in the league table by getting the better of Jeremy Fagg by four legs to one. That's the tail of the tape. 91 average, four out of seven on the doubles and 110 high checkout. As for Jeremy Fagg, well, two wins from his day. Pretty much everybody's in the equation for qualification going into tomorrow's action here at the Super Series in Group C. But it is Conan Whitehead. The Barbarian, who is the man to be to the top of the table and assessing all of the action from today, Chris Mason has made his way up to the balcony to chat to Abigail Davies. Yeah, Adam Hunt, not at his consistent best, but reminding us what he's capable of doing today. Yeah, I mean, he's hit some good averages today. He walked into a, a, a superb Conan Whitehead in his, his second match of the day where he improved on his first match. Uh, took out those finishes of 119 and 138, but they weren't enough, and nothing was enough today against Conan Whitehead. Yeah, Conan Whitehead enjoyed the perfect day. It looked relatively straightforward for him, didn't it? And we've seen some interesting things for him. We've seen him go bull when he's required <laughs> 50. We've seen attempts at three tops. Do you think that's just a sign that he feels he is miles and miles above everyone else? Yeah, I think so. I think it's a, a, sign, of, a sign of confidence. It's almost sending out a little message to, to his opponents, and you know, and it, for the vast majority of the day, he looked a different class and uh, rightly comes out of the uh, session five from five. Yeah, let's have a look then at the league table at the halfway point in Group C. Everyone's still in the mix, that's for certain. Bradley Roos, though, he has improved so much coming into today's play. I mentioned how much he'd been practising in the build-up to today's action. He seems a completely different player. Yeah, and, and we sort of spoke on that yesterday in, in sort of teeing up today, and we, we felt that... Bradley was the most likely, along with Adam, actually, that could turn things around with that sort of reset mentality and, and just turn up and, and have a good go. We were, we were sort of wondering whether it was right to come in so early and put in so much practice, but it paid dividends. And a really exciting night of action to look forward to as well. Of course, Andy Jenkins getting involved. Excited to see what he can do this summer. Yeah, looking forward to Johnny Haynes and Matty Dennant's been finding a bit of good form of late. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be a good night. I've been impressed with Stuart White, what we've seen so far from him. And, and Niall Cullerton, he played very well in Group A. He played well, but I do feel like he has so much more to give. So it'll be interesting to see whether he does that. Make sure you come back and join us from 10 p.m. when all the Group B action gets underway.
this week so far. Let me just give you the tale of the tape in regards to the action that you have seen so far tonight. See, Paul Nicholson up on the balcony said that Niall Cullerton's got a habit of beating players who average better than him. In that case, he is going to need to do that again. Running averages for tonight, John Henderson, 92.38. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. First leg, it's Niall to throw first. Game on. Niall Cullerton, 86.81. So just to case that point that he's going to have to repeat that form. Best finish of the night for John Henderson, 105 against the 82 of Niall Cullerton. Check out percentages. 57% for John Henderson against the 37 and Niall Cullerton. And that is Niall Cullerton's first 180 of the night. What a time to do that. He hasn't been a very good 180 hitter this week. In fact, he's been one of the worst of all of the players. But the fact of the matter is, if you are going to find them, you might as well save them for the final game. The 104th game of the week. Like I said to Henry, Matt, when you start on Monday morning and you've got six players in Group A, if you offer to all of those players the opportunity to 60. play somebody seven times in a week, you would take it because you know that you'll be playing them in 60. either a semi-final no, or a final. Simple as that. Hot start. For Cully. Did he go for the 11 there? He did. I think he's drawn a line in the sand with himself and said, right, I'm going to go full throttle here. I'm going to go for my shots, whether John's on a finish or not. 140. No, you require 28. For the opening leg of the final. Two 14s. Getting closer. Moves to the right. We can really open up the arm and try Game and use the darts the that are in the board. No, Cullerton. Oh, Cullerton gets his first leg on the board like he got his first 180, which was the point I was trying to make before once again, like Fallon Sherrick did Second in the leg last. Second leg is John to throw first. Rudely interrupted Game by one. Brilliance. Henderson, six 180s for the night so far. And obviously, Niall won the bullseye in the practice room, giving him the start. 59. And in every scenario, you will take the darts. In a longer format match, We've seen people say, you go first. 58. But you don't do that here. Nail won it and took it. Hendo has been 140. in a very different zone over the last couple of days. He has not lost tonight. He only lost 100. one game yesterday to Fallon Sherrick. And that was... To her averaging around 98. That's the kind of range that maybe will overtake him. And Cullerton's only delivered that kind of level in small doses, maybe for one or two legs at a time. 43. Not for an entire match all week. Twenty-eight the average for this evening, 86.81. Pretty much exactly what we're saying he runs at all the time. Mid-80s average. 125. If he is to take another step, he's probably going to have to find five more on that all Thank the you. time. But we're not talking about all the time right now. We're talking about right now. If he can dish out a 90 to 95 average in this game. He will give himself a chance unless John finds more of what he's done tonight. Because at times, like you coined earlier, Matt, he has had those little spells of John, you require 68. Single eight for tops. 28. That wire. Now you require 142. By his dart. It's not going to be one of the finishes of the week. Which you guys voted as the 134. Jared Cole, well done, guys, because you were absolutely John, you right. John, you require 40. Yeah, fully agree with that one. Although right now, this will feel like finish of the week for John Henderson. 
because everything is Game amplified. Shot the second line. John Henderson. Even the 40s, even the little 42s, it all just means so much more. Which makes Burnley it so gets much harder. To try first. Game on. It's a weird scenario for John and for Niall, actually. They've both put themselves 41. through the mill this week. 15 games played each Monday to Wednesday. Then another eight over the next couple of days. 40. That makes 26 games they've played this week. This is a bruising, bruising schedule. And the reward for winning this game is not just £2,500 more than what they have right now. It is the possibility to do the same again next week. For a somewhat amplified 56. amount. Just going to go back to a point I made a little bit earlier. He has not changed his darts all night. That tells me that this colour of barrel, this colour of flight and stem combination, is what he genuinely wants to use. Part of that, though, could come down to the fact that he's winning matches. Why would you change when you're winning? And I think the fact he's winning and he's playing well and... He's winning those big moments. Yeah, don't change a winning formula. It's pretty simple. 27. Those coming up dry in leg three. So far, this is turning out to be Endo's worst performance for a couple of days. 95. He had his worst average at the back end of Thursday night. It was a mid-70s average. 45. And after that, you require 80. he said he was just a little embarrassed by it. And the feed-on effect for what he did on Friday was... 40. Well, it was floor-shaking because he was incredible the first two games of Friday. But... What did you say earlier in the week, Matt? 45. There is no tomorrow. No, you require 40. Game shot on the third leg. 2 1 Cullerton. Cullerton. And it's following the pattern of who throws first. Has Hendel Fourth got leg. anything left in the tank? First. Because game this on. game is being played on Cullerton's terms. And the thing is, when we've looked at this time of night, this ain't Hendo hour. All week. We've got a good read on this now. We've had five days. Five days of play. This isn't just once. I say something happens once, okay. Two, it's a concern. Three, it's a pattern. Five, it's a problem. So many times we see weekly titles won. Not by the best player. 59. But by the person who can endure. And if there is a word to describe this guy this week is that he's endured 140. lots of matches that he could possibly have lost. And he's come out shining. He's not bothered by big averages. He just wants to get the points. 140. But this is not about points. The points are gone. The group stages are gone. This is the sprint to the finish. 122. This is to join the likes of Osborne and Justin Smith and Raymond Smith and Jim McEwen and the rest. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Niall Cullerton is making a charge. 100. This is a big, no, big leg from Cullerton. He's hit two trebles with every visit so far. He only needs one. He's going to get a dart at a double in this one. Hendo's going to get one look at something 59. like this. John, you require 144. Not close. He's getting a lot of encouragement from the audience. 
It's a very different atmosphere here. You can hear everything that people say. It's not Nine white noise. 48. But Niall's trying to keep the Hendo fans quiet. Game and he's doing a very good job play. of it as well. Not because Carlton. that is a 14 data. And he will now have multiple opportunities to serve it out. Two of the legs of the three that are possible to play, Niall Cullerton will throw first. Fifth leg, it's Niall to throw if first. We are talking about Game odds, on. If we are talking about probabilities, Niall Cullerton has just become a huge favourite to win week 12, the final week of Super Series 2. The final chance to qualify for Champions Week. We did break the news to you, of course, before this final that Graham Usher and Adam Warner cannot participate. That's because they now have PDC tour cards. Scott Walters has now been confirmed as 60. a participant for next week because of his statistics in the reserve column. As for who will join 99. him, will it be Niall? Or John, the other participant, TBC. 100. We will have the news of that person as well coming up. Hendo is fighting now. He needs to find three straight legs to stay in Portsmouth for another week. 100. John, you require 143. Jared Cole had a shot at this. But he went 19s first. That was in his semi-final against Cullerton. Cully's biggest finish of this entire week is 157. This is a little bit easier because you concentrate two dots on the same treble. That treble. But he can't get a second. He fancied it. A match saving. A week saving. 96. Opportunity. John, you require 100. He's going to get two. At his favourite top. Game shot on the fifth leg. That John Henderson. is a good, clean kill from John Henderson, who had his backs up against the ropes. He was boxed into the corner. Niall Cullerton sat on 48 Six for the leg, match, and John Henderson first. finds Game a 100 on. finish. You said, Matt, that Niall had two chances to serve it out. The first chance is gone. Can Hendo take us the distance? 85. In what's been a pulsating evening. 20. He has not been a weekly champion 22. with us before. He doesn't know how to get across the line. Or should I say, he hasn't done it before. So he can't draw on any experience. Is there anything in the way of experience that John can draw on coming into this? Oh, absolutely. John Henderson won the World Cup of Darts. What's the format of the singles of the World Cup of Darts? Best of seven legs. And he was really strong. In those singles as well. 45. Big positive experience over this format. Knows how to dig deep. He is digging deep. I think the adrenaline's starting to kick back in. This won't be his second wind. It might be his 15th over the last three weeks. Said he was boxed into the corner. He isn't just coming out swinging, he's coming out windmilling. John, you require He's giving it everything he's got for one last push. One last opportunity to loft that big novelty 60. check up into the air with his name on it. 60. I think Niall's got his 60. mind on the next John, leg you already. John, 96. Maybe just a matter of seconds away. Just going to lay it up. I think with Niall on 2 3 4 here, that maybe going the 16s route was the right play. 71. 
If he'd have gone treble 16, he would have had a shot at double 14. But a single, and then he could have gone for the big 20 and just lay up for tops. Whereas now he's got to lay up for tops with one of the darts he's about to burn. 58. It just so happens John that Niall is not on a finish and it doesn't really matter. To take us the distance. 18. He's not there yet. 9 all you feel is already starting to think. 120. Of the next leg. John, and if John Henderson 40. can hit his favourite tops, it will be all on the next leg, the last leg. Game and we came here play. on Monday. John Henderson. Three groups ahead of us. Group A went the distance. Group B went the distance. Group C went so the distance. Final leg. It's not so it only seems first. fitting that the final game, the game big on. game for the big check, goes all the way to a deciding leg. This night has delivered. I think we're all going to need a lie down after this. Whoever wins this leg might not sleep tonight. And you'll take that start every single time. Immediate pressure on Henderson. 100. He's not far behind. But Cullerton for the half dart lead. He's looking to back up the 140. 82. What a lovely last dart that is. We know Noel Cullerton's an emotional man. We've seen it come out of him. And you just feel right now that he's just trying to 96. bottle it off, trying to stay composed. You know the heart rate will be going. He knows what this means. He's been in the Super Series many times. And what a rapid 100. increase in performance from the Noel Cullerton we saw before Christmas. Henderson is not going to get to a finish. But how close can he get to Niall's position? 100. He's been just behind all leg. He's having to wait for a Cullerton mistake. Is that it? 27. The only bright side is that Cullerton has found him his way to a finish. Big three darts. Needs a treble. 93. Big treble. No, we you know 112 is in Hendo range. It is. And that was a big finish he hit against Fallon Sherrick the other night. However, it's not in his hands. 120. The werewolf has missed a dart for the weekly title on John double 16 and a 152. Can Henderson hit the 112? He gets a dart at tops. And he's hit it! Henderson wins with the biggie! And the winner of the motor super And he wins week 12 in the same sort of way that Chris Mason won week 12 in Super Series 1. Cullerton is devastated, and he has every right to be, because he missed double 16 to win the whole thing, and the Highlander has done it! What an evening, pulsating from start to finish. And even though the averages in that game were only mid-80s, that was a pulsating contest from start to finish.